Welcome back to Crown Magical Crown needs a haircut, okay? But he he doesn't cause I shaved his back. That's, that's right. That's true. That's <laughs> That's true love. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It's a glorious Monday over here. It's a whole new fucking week. We got plenty to talk about. CME is open back up and trading once again. Bitcoin hitting our $31,000 target from yesterday. And we have new opportunities within this market. Understand though, this might be displeasurable. I see that there's a lot of new people on this channel today specifically. And uh, oh yeah, that opening too. And that was fucking amazing, man. Was listening to some Raging Machine uh, just this morning. I was like, man, how can you not play this right now? This is fucking perfect. Anyways, uh, yes. Yes. A lot of new people on this channel i should warn you before we get into it you're gonna be mad you're gonna be very very mad but that's okay this channel as always is focused on traders and uh, it's not that we discriminate against other you know creeds and religions whatever the fuck you might be within this world we just <laughs> just understand that you know we can be both bullish and bearish of course 
and that always comes up with opportunity. That's the main thing. That's the main thing that we want to be having over here. Anyways, with that said, I've been getting this question a lot recently. Crown, is this a bear market? Is this a bull market? Look, at the end of the day, this market's non-binary. How about that? It's fucking market fluid, and it can go from bull to bear in a goddamn second. And at the end of the day, technically speaking, if you go by the textbook definition, which a lot of people have been arguing with me uh, with with me on this, which uh, you can be free to, free to argue, but fair enough. This is this is technically the definition. What do you want to see on an actual uh, macro downtrend or an actual macro bear market? You want to see at least a fucking weekly downtrend, and you want to see all major moving averages trending with lower periods trading below higher periods. And we do we see that right now no does that really matter because bitcoin sells like a 50 to 60 percent drop down yes <laughs> no my point is is that at the end of the day you know, regardless of whether regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish, man, this market can fucking zoom both the upside and the downside. And so I would actually even just say that that's more or less a talking point for people to kind of get pissed off at and, you know, you know, put moon boy and doom boy, hopium and dopium into. At the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter for a trader. Just make sure that you have your level set off and your biases uh, all accompanied for and obviously your risk managed. What's up, Mr. Josh? There he is. He definitely manages risk. I fucking know that he manages risk because I've been speaking to him, to him for a while. He got out of fucking vet at like the perfect top. What's up? back here bear today yeah man uh elsa actually shaved me <laughs> she actually shaved me <laughs> i was trying to make a move on her last night and she laughed in my face do you know how demoralizing that is it's <laughs> really awful anyways uh okay so into the crown chain application we go uh let's waste no more time because we got plenty to talk about today fear and greed index at i believe the lowest that we have seen on this jump uh, on this drop thus far uh, quite literally a 10 read we haven't not gotten to single digits just yet but anywhere around here is like extremely fearful now with that said does that just mean that you blindly fucking buy obviously not because you would have done that about three days ago, three, four days ago, and you would have probably held about a uh, almost $10,000 loss from 40000 bucks to $30,000 low. Anyways, with that said, this is, you know, a, a sign that is more on the side of saying, hey, uh, while I do think that Bitcoin could could, could potentially uh, continue on downwards from here, I want to start looking for some signs of bottoming at the very least for short term time frames, because again, this asset can fucking move very, 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 very quickly. And even if it does put in like a short term bottom on a, on a four hour time frame, I mean, that can account for like, a, you know, a 10 percent move or so, which is very much tradable. Anyways, Bitcoin Don is also sprucing up as well. So altcoins are going into Bitcoins on the whole. That does that does imply that as long as Bitcoin is uh, running this market, in this case, to the downside, then it's not going to be too damn good for the uh, for well, for the altcoins out there, unfortunately. Now, I'm sure that there's a few uh, outliers here and there who are actually doing well. Hey, what's up, Mr. Hamilton? There he is. I've been trying to call it a bearish phase. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say bearish phase is right. I mean, you know, you can't just discount a 50%, uh, you know, a 50 or 60% downside move, obviously. But, you know, call it what you want to call it. That's that's the actual data. That's the hard that's a hard and fast facts. It's like it's a 50 to 60% downtrend. So at the end of the day, remember when we came in from this area way the fuck back on over here on the market data tab, uh, we do see that Bitcoin took out that last low. This was really where this started to look like actual distribution. This is what told this channel at around that move to, uh, what was it, about 49,000 bucks, just below 50,000 bucks on that first drop, that, hey, it's time to be looking for a lower high because this is risk on right now. Where do we get our lower high? 59,000 bucks. Have we got a lower high since then on the daily? No, we haven't. We actually haven't, which is really fucking uh, concerning because at some point, Bitcoin, whether you're bullish or bearish, will pop back up. And then you got to play the game of is this a lower high or is this a reversal in progress? And we just need to be patient. So at the end of the day, this is inc this is still massive risk on for the long term right now. You know, long term, I still do think that Bitcoin is probably going to be more or less fine. But, you know, how long could that be? Could be a year, could be two years, could be whatever the fuck. Uh, personally speaking, though, I still do think Bit I would still give Bitcoin a chance to bottom out or at least try for a bottom here at the low $30,000 region or, or upper $20,000 region. What's up, brother Christian, sir? There he is. Good morning, brother Crown. The plan is underway and the clergy have not deviated. God bless, sir. My fucking man. He, we are in God's plan. We are in God's hands. And we have our we have our own cave priest right now blessing this place. And that's exactly what we want. So hopefully, brother Mar or Sister Margaret is not possessed anymore because it sounded like she was having a bad last week. But now, now, now is the time to be looking for opportunities, in my opinion. Anyways, uh, what else do we see over here? Open interest continues to fall down a little bit more. I think we lost about another uh, half a billion almost from yesterday to today. I believe it was actually below uh, five billion last I checked. Yeah, it was, and actually just uh, it actually just moved up a little bit there with price action. Now, realistically, I want to see this on a daily time frame to really you know clarify moves and whatnot. That's where it matters most. Is that's where it's going to be marked too. But overall, I would look at that as you know a small signal again saying, hey, while I think Bitcoin probably does maybe give another go at like 32 or 31,000 bucks, I, I would look for signs of bottoming around there. I think it's been pretty damn beat up and it's not asking for too much to, it's not asking Bula Jesus for too much in order to get a bit of a bouncer, even on like an hourly or something, which again, you know, th this asset can move thousands of dollars 
uh, rather easily as this is incredibly fucking volatile times. In fact, we are at, you know, well, <laughs> well, uh, statistically speaking, like the extremes right now, of course, which we'll show in a second. Anyways, uh, the funny rate over here is actually, I think, positive now. Nope, it's not. <laughs> Global funny rate still negative. So again, another signal saying, hey, you know, yes, yes, Bitcoin prize, a little bit of short term downside here, but uh, I would be a little bit cognizant of this. You know, we're seeing BitMEX and Huobi now now paying longs, not point out five percent in order to hold their longs. Binance, uh, Bit, uh, Bybit and and uh, OKX doing about the same, but to a lesser degree. And then Derivit just barely fucking positive. And same thing with Kraken, barely negative right there. So overall, you know, I do, I do think that we're rather close to, at the very least, a relief rally. Um, you know, after that first markdown phase and that first redistribution phase, again, looking at this as a Wyckoff top, we'll go into the market analytics for the options market here too. I'd say this is a little bit more damning to be quite honest with you, as we do see the, the put call ratio now going more in favor of calls once again. So yesterday, this was about like 0.61. Now it went up to about 0.76, but there's a couple things hidden within this data right here, which I think are really, 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 really important to be cognizant of. This $33,000 strike with the puts, uh, you know, grossly overweighing anything else on the board does kind of tell me that by expiration, we probably do close at the very least somewhere around there, probably above there and fuck the put buyers who are just looking for the uh, for the lottery tickets. Because what are these put buyers likely doing? They're likely they're, they're likely not just putting on naked puts. Very, you know, professionals do not trade like that. I, I, I don't, I, I just, <laughs> not only do you not trade like that, like your fucking compliance officer and your, and your risk management officer is gonna like call you up and chew you out as I have been in the past myself. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what's probably happening is they're either spreading these out or or they got the or they got the uh, strangle on it actually could be a 37 33 strangle and we just play between 33 and 37 for a while i think that's very uh, that you know that's very reasonable here too um, or, or they actually just cover it and those, and that becomes a synthetic long position now, doesn't it? Anyways, looking at the, uh, I want to see where the expiration on this is. Yeah, we do see that still calls grossly overweighing anything else, uh, playing the May 28 regulars. That's going to be the end of this month. And then the June, uh, monthlies as well, uh, big time right there. And of course that does provide a bit of a range. So I want to see how this kind of, uh, 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 evolves into the end of this week. We're on the 24th day of May right now. It's almost June. And I'm really excited for that. Cause I get to, uh, get to play chivalry too which I'm really excited about, massive nerd. But uh, recently, I actually haven't had too much of a chance to play video games because uh, trading is the best video game. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, this month coming to a close relatively soon. So we actually should check out on the monthly today. But before that, um, well, let's actually go into the price action charts. Let's let's just let's, let's waste no more time, my friends. Let's waste no more time. And what do we see over here on CME? Actually, let's go to this chart over here. So CME obviously opened on a down tick, as we did say was likely coming in from Sunday. Uh, well, Sunday's dump party. We did hit that $31,000 target. And I just want to spend a little bit of time on CME chart right here. Funnily enough, remember those strikes that we just saw on the options market? Guess where the 200 simple is? Well, right around 32,000 bucks and climbing. And where's the 200 exponential on average? Right around 37,000 bucks and sideways AF. So what does that imply? It implies that we probably remain in this range probably for this week. You know, you're probably going to see maybe some wicks above and below, but ultimately I do think it's going to be a bit of a rangy week um, as Bitcoin does test both the downside of, you know, well, uh, you know, of our current dump and then probably does, you know, put in a bit of a, uh, you know, pu uh, put in a bit of a relief rally. But again, looking at this from a Wyckoff structure. I do want to go over kind of what we spoke about yesterday. I don't want to do too much repeating, so I will just point your eyes and or your ears, uh, your ears and eyes actually, in the direction of yesterday's video on the long-term analysis playlist, as uh, that's going to go into much more detail with this, and I won't go through the full thing here, but. Ultimately, this was a textbook Wyckoff top. Uh, again, the full-on confirmation was that move below 50,000 bucks. That's where we really started to like get actually bearish. You know, again, that was also continuation of downtrend. I just want to spend a second talking about trend. Look, trend is one of the most simple ways to trade, and it's uh, to be honest with you, it's, mo it's one of the most effective ways to trade as well, especially daily trend for Bitcoin um, and uh, and and weekly as well. Although it doesn't happen as often, but as you can see right here, I mean, these are just phenomenal moves. Now we obviously have hit the measured move off of that Wyckoff top. Just kind of take the breadth of of this um you know of this range right here and that would be pretty much down to about where we're at right now maybe a little bit lower that's a little bit more of an aggressive read as i just did but ultimately when you are getting a wyckoff um sort of signature here you get this first sort of distributive top right here here's a confirmation on the break below fifty thousand bucks and then we got our first throwback not at not at forty five thousand bucks, not at forty forty thousand bucks, but at fucking thirty thousand bucks, all the way up to about forty one thousand bucks. That was a quick rejection, and that's why we came in bearish over the weekend, very likely looking for more downside, um, which we got. And now it's time to be looking for a bit of potential, you know, or at least <laughs> I would open up the um, I would open up the doors for a potential, you know, accumulation phase if it does want to happen right here. Anywhere around low thirty thousand dollars, I do think is uh, you know is reasonable. But I want to be very fucking specifically specific 
specific in saying this. Look, if you are looking to invest in this asset, which I'm not an investor uh, myself, I'm you know I'm a trader. I'm just a simple trader. I have very low IQ, so I you know I don't like holding things for a long time. I also can't sleep in it as well. But um, you know I wouldn't even consider calling this a low unless if the next few things that I'm going to talk about are met, of which none of them have been met just yet. So first and foremost, I want to go over here to the hash ribbon signal. We've been following this one for a while. This one was also kind of helping us uh, not not just dive into any like long term longs above, especially fifty thousand bucks. <laughs> and now and now looking pretty damn good on that. And we still do not have that blue buy signal. I won't go through the iterations on this video here. I did it yesterday, and you uh, again are more than welcome to uh, check that out. It's in the long term analysis playlist. But we go through all of these iterations on this, and until we get that blue buy signal over here, I wouldn't even consider that Bitcoin's put in like a major low. That is, or or, or especially a macro low in this case. And then even after that, you know, it typically takes about, uh, you know, about a week to two weeks on average for it to actually get that next momentous move uh, in the upside direction. So in this case right here, we still don't have it and they're actually diverging away from each other. So it's, you know, it's not happening. It's not happening right now. It's not going to happen anytime soon. As you can see that, you know, we want them to actually uh, will actually remain in like a bullish posture. And so not fucking good right there, obviously. And that would be another risky sign. So until that happens, I, I still do not just feel, uh, you know, in any way, shape or form uh, comfortable calling like a major low. Of course, that will probably call it a little bit after the fact, to be fair. But that's, you know, that's well, that that's that's being safe rather than sorry. In this case, the other big thing that I'd be talking about right here that I really want to wait for in order to see uh, some sort of a macro or not even a macro low, but like a major low, you know, probably like a five to ten thousand dollar rally, <laughs> five to ten thousand dollar rally. How ridiculous does that sound? I mean, it, it is true uh, would be the four hour would, would be would be at the very least like a low term time from like a four hour putting in a reversal problem is even on a four hour where's our last lower high well before we we had it at forty five thousand five hundred then we moved it down over the week uh over last week to about forty one thousand five hundred then over the weekend <laughs> once again to thirty eight thousand five hundred and that's where we are right now so as long as bitcoin's below this region right here there's just no in there's just no talk no talk at all whatsoever of like any you know major uh reversal within this region personally speaking i'm looking for bitcoin to test again on the downside somewhere around 32 to 33,000 bucks and at that point I'd look for a little bit of bottoming signals. I do think that we are starting to show some signals of a little bit of uh you know of you know of a little bit of bid catching in the low $30,000 region. I like these wicks right here. I like the volume again on this one right here and I do like that BBWP did print, you know, quite literally the extreme the extremist the extremist read it can possibly do um as it did get all the way to 100 percentile. So if you're not familiar with this indicator, it's a volatility based indicator. I really 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 like volatility based indicators for kind of judging when you know things are at extremes and when are things at extremes well when they're on like major highs and major lows in this case and we did get uh 100 percent on the 21st of may and then yet again to, uh yesterday at 23rd of may and now we are on the 24th of may and another thing that i'd like to be looking for here is i'd actually really want to see this moving average on it which you see right here i'm actually running uh i forget which period i'm running on this a 16 period right here actually uh, yeah 16 period um, and, and, I've, and I've been testing a few strategies with this. It's actually pretty damn interesting. Um, but what I really want to see is I want to see that moving average get above the BBWP and then trend down. Something like to what you see over here. These typically do denote short. Uh, these typically do denote like pretty, you know, res uh, respectable reversals. Um, so uh, so so with that in mind, you know, you can, I can give you a few examples. I think a really good example to go over would obviously be coronavirus dump times over here. You can see that we hit a 100 percentile. So very, you know, similar. I wouldn't say similar, but, you know, somewhat uh, relatable to what we're doing right now as far as volatility goes and then it's not until that actually got below this moving average right here where bitcoin really started to actually you know continue on with that trend i think that it was you know a lot risky before that but that happened right around here on this higher low so i actually do like that and and again a bit of a timing signal it's not going to get it exactly perfectly but you can see that we have you know we we have some time here so even if you are a long-term investor i would i would perhaps um you know bring up the question in your mind hey uh you know even if, even if you do think this is going to be like the the next major the next fucking macro low before Bitcoin goes to whatever ridiculous target you have in your mind. I, you know, I, I think that it could probably get to some like of those ridiculous targets. But people are talking about like fucking hundred, like two hundred thousand dollars and a million dollars and shit like that. I, mean, I don't know, man. That's that's too much for me. Um, uh, you know, I, you know, I'd, have, I'd, I'd at the very least want to see something like that. There is no rush is what I'm trying to say. I'd want, I really want to see Bitcoin like drop into this region and put in about a similar formation or sorry, a similar amount of time as what we saw in the top side formation over here. A general uh, but not necessarily hard rule of Wyckoff accumulation distribution is that once you see the distribution, you kind of want to see a similar uh, as you know, a similar length of accumulation in order to kind of get the next, uh, you know, the next next major low. Hey, what's up? Poju42. He says, looks like the dollar is what? 
is sitting on daily support, ready to go lower. S and P and Nasdaq are consolidating for another move up. Bitcoin to five hundred thousand bucks. Okay, so that would be the bullish. Uh, that would obviously be the bullish narrative here. So I do want to bring you over to Dixie now. Where where's my damn Dixie? Ninety uh, percent right, or sorry, not not ninety percent, but uh, but ninety bucks right here. Yes, it is basing right on this area, man. But um, you know, I I. I Look, it had a chance to break last week. It didn't fucking take it. It's going to have another chance to break this week. Yes, it does look bearish. Yes, it does look like it wants to turn it down. Yes, we do see all momentum also is pretty much uh, south side angled on higher term time frames. I mean, we even just selling off the same trend line from uh, December 2018. And uh, and I would say that, you know, this is looking more or less like it, it does want to give another try this week. But until we actually get that breakage of it, this is a macro bottoming area. And if this is a macro bottoming area, you do have to play, you know, anything against the dollar, you know, like dollar assets uh, as risk in this case and so uh, you know i like i said it's, it's very likely to test again this region and it might even break and it might even break uh this week but until that happens i mean this is this is concerning this is very concerning on top of that, I mean, you know, obviously uh, RSI right here is very bearish as well. I'm sure that someone's going to say that there's a uh, bullish divergence building right there. There's actually not just yet. Uh, we'd have to close on lower lows and we don't have that just yet. And this is also, you know, a downtrend on increasing volatility here too. So I do look at this as very, uh, you know, as still risk on in this case. Um, but there are a few, you know, uh, harbingers of maybe peace and prosperity for the boo laws out there as we pour one out over the weekend's uh, woes. Anyways, um, what else did I want to bring up? Yeah, NASDAQ. Okay, so traditional market markets I do think are going to play relatively well with Bitcoin and the and the fact of the matter is is that like we said last week look as long as this is holding the range right here oh motherfucker deleted my chart how dare you how fucking dare you I bet you Elsa deleted my chart because she's 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 vindictive is what she is um, but I, you know I'd be looking at a range like this I do think it's going to bake in this range for a little bit longer as we said last week and then the resolution of this range is probably going to be Bitcoin's direction as well problem is if, if this one breaks down well I'd be looking for further downside on Bitcoin, you know, probably 25,000 uh, bucks, which is still very much relevant. But at the very least, I'd give Bitcoin, a, you know, another chance to kind of uh, grind out this low $30,000 region and then uh, and then and, and, and then try at least for like a pity bounce and perhaps even a reversal. But where do you talk about like full on reversal on Bitcoin at this point? So it's similar when we were kind of judging the reversal above 50,000 uh, bucks about a month, month and a half ago right here. Right. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, I just lost my train of thought, so I actually don't know what I mean by that. Uh, yes, okay, now I remember what I uh, now I remember what, what I was getting towards. So remember this. Remember when we came in and we put in our first lower low on the daily for this whole goddamn rally right here um, on this you know on this last expansion phase. Well, what did we do after that? We took a uh, we take a we took a bearish Fibonacci retracement, and guess where guess where the six one eight came in right around fifty eight thousand bucks, and that was our last closing high. That was essentially your lower high before continuation down. We can do the same thing. Here here to assuming that this will put in a low again this is making an assumption right now this is not a confirmed local low as it stands at all whatsoever. fucking ever i want to be very deliberately clear about that it is not a low right now however if you do start to see maybe later this week a few more weeks within this region and bitcoin still maintaining let's call it like thirty-five thousand bucks then i would be doing something like this i'd be doing something like this and these would kind of be my my areas of interest to the upside of bitcoin wants to put in a bull trap uh but again it is technically speaking risk on or sorry risk uh you know risky behavior as long as bitcoin's especially especially below fifty thousand bucks that is actually the the, uh, the 618 right here so traditionally speaking uh you know a lot you know a lot of assets like to put in their bull trap somewhere around the 618 um sometimes you see it on very weak assets around the 382 in this case um and on like and just on like complete dog shit you'll see it at the 236 but uh in this case I, I i don't think bitcoin's like complete dog shit it's just a little bit dog shit um <laughs> just a little bit dog shit there's no big deal with that um but overall you know these are the areas that i'd be keeping an eye on um, now I feel like I lost my chart once again. This is very, very bizarre today. What's going on here, man? What's going on? Uh, let's see. Nope. No, I don't have that one. Uh, are you fucking kidding me? I swear. I swear. What the hell? Okay, Elsa is definitely trolling me today. Um, so overall, you know, do I think that it's possible that Bitcoin could do something like this and put in like a, you know, a three to four month long consolidation on the lows and uh, maybe dip a little bit lower and try one of these? Yeah, I do think it's possible. And and I know that a lot of people right now want to get super fucking bearish. Look, I, I can definitely get super fucking bearish as well. But uh, after about a 53, 54% drop down uh, from prior highs, is that, to, is that the time to really be shorting just, you know, by fucking probabilistic standards? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, even if you do, you know, if you do want to short this, you're probably going to get an entry higher, um, assuming that that is what you want to do. But again, I'll bring you back to CME chart over here. I do believe that the CME chart does uh, does matter more than any other chart. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, I, I would still be looking at another bounce somewhere around about thirty two thousand bucks or thirty three thousand uh, bucks, respectively. Now, what would be my conditions for further continuation to the downside? 
Uh, can we go off structure here? That's the real question. Um, we can we can't really on the short term time frames because it's a little bit too uh, it's a little bit too close there to be fair. Uh, if we go to a twelve hour, where'd my where'd my continuation point be? I'd say about thirty one thousand bucks on a closure. Uh, you could probably you know you, you at at that, at that point I'd start to look towards a move towards about twenty four to twenty five thousand bucks. Yes, it is certainly possible. But again, as a trader, you know I I, I want to see I want to see proof of that move first. I mean th this has been a really 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 aggressive move down here. And typically speaking, after you do hit extremes on your volatility you're going to, at the very least, get like a pity bounce. And I, I think that that's likely what we're going to try around this region. I mean, even if we go to spot price action, we see that the 377s coming in right around, guess where, 32,000 bucks. So I do like that area. And are we showing, uh, would we would be putting any potential bullish divergence? Um, it's possible, yes, but it's certainly not, it's certainly not, uh, certainly not, 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 uh, not close just yet. Uh, so that is its potential, but certainly not confirmed in any way, shape or form. If we go over here to CME chart, I, sh I do want to point this out. Uh, we do have this trend line coming in from our major lows uh, at about, uh, November 2018, around uh, 3,100 bucks. Um, connect, or sorry, I guess it would be December 2018. Connected with our coronavirus dump lows, and we're actually hitting that same trend line on CME uh, RSI specifically. Uh, again, a little bit of hopium right there, to be fair. But uh, I'm curious if the jewel sell signal on the weekly has fully played out. Now let's go. Let's go give it a bit of an analysis over here. And yes, here is your sell signal on the 5th of fucking April. The jewel, the weekly jewel plus the pie cycle indicator, motherfucker, man. For all the people who doubt, who doubted the the uh, the pie cycle indicator, myself included. Myself Self included. I uh, well, definitely eating, definitely eating our words now. But you know, again, I do put trend first, and at the end of the day, I, I'd still stick with that. I do, you know, I I, I do feel quite good about that call, below, especially below fifty thousand bucks, and being um, and being uh, very cautious on that last bounce there uh, to kind of toot my own horn. Uh, probably just sounds egotistical. Apologies on that; it's not my intention. But at the end of the day, I just want to highlight the fact of how important, um, obviously, uh, uh, what's it called just trend is trend trend is your friend if you just let it be and in this case right now all time frames are downtrending um as long as we are below about a weekly actually the weekly is technically not in a downtrend just yet it's pretty fucking close to going into one though if it closed below this last weekly low right here at about thirty-two thousand bucks it will and at that point you know you're gonna have targets down to twenty-five thousand bucks and I, I you know you're probably gonna need a bounce there but uh, do I think that it stops there? I mean, at that point, you know, you can maybe even look for for nineteen to twenty thousand uh, bucks, uh, you know, in uh, before before it's all said and done. So again, we are kind of we are kind of at a, uh, a very very interesting point here um, for pretty much all you know uh, for pretty much all traders. But it's still going to take a little bit of time here, and this is really you know a moment for like technical traders to kind of do their duties. And uh, and of course and, and of course the quant firms doing doing arbitrage and whatnot too. I mean this is really a time for them to shine and, and where they're going to make a shit ton of money. Uh, but uh, but you know investors right now I don't think that there's a rush in this asset. And again you know the, these moves they can be rather seductive even on the short term time frames like a four hour right here which I see people say four hour short term time frame what the fuck man you're, you're telling me the four hours a short term time frame it's like yeah actually I do think it is um, especially on Bitcoin again if you just follow the four hour trend. Uh, well, it's been pretty good to you ever since about 58,000 bucks on that lower high. So, uh, so I'll just kind of call it like I see it right there. But I should, I should denote this. Uh, let me just take a, let me just take a sip, a sip of this coffee first, and then we'll get down into it. All right, there we go. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, I, I do want to call this out as well. We are seeing um, uh, a lot of divergences, a lot of bullish divergences build up on the lower and medium term timeframes, I believe. Here's our four hour building multiple drives. Uh, getting the last low right here again i actually do think that this will probably come back down and test around the low like 32 or 33 thousand bucks but uh but ultimately if we do take out i guess this that would create this as a you know as a local high then uh then then i could be looking for a greater move probably to about 37 to 38 thousand bucks if i had to guess uh if we go over to 212 or do we have the same thing in order as well uh no actually we don't <laughs> actually we don't uh not yet at least uh there is no confirmed local lows right here in fact we did get a death cross on the 12 hour um i'm not a humongous fan of the death cross on a on a time from like a 12 hour it doesn't have great results uh, historically speaking but excuse me highly unprofessional today uh, <laughs> as always let's just talk about this over here too how about this <laughs> we'll get to that later maybe <laughs> Elon Musk you're at the bastard um, <laughs> anyways uh, yeah looking at this right here no not a confirmed local low just yet and, uh, and, and, and not even resembling one uh, as it stands right now um, and what would be needed in order to confirm this as a local low I'd want to see at the very least like a closure above 36,000 bucks on a 12 hour uh, and then yeah you could probably target a move up to at the very least a 10 simple but I, i'd prefer the 21 in this case that will be naturally coming down as it's currently hanging around about 41.5 region 
and that'd be your last lower high on the 12 hour here too so it'd still be trending down overall it'd still be you know risky from a you know risky from a medium term time frame perspective again it's the time to be a range trader in my opinion it's not the time to be uh it's not the time to be like a fucking hero trying to get the ultimate low um in this case uh, I, I i don't even think that that's like a worthy i don't even think that that's like a worthy thing to do as an investor to be quite honest with you you know you when you're an investor at least if i was an investor i would be thinking in terms of opportunity costs as well it's like you don't want to be fucking sitting in something that's not moving for a while too and regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish even if you do think bitcoin's you know going to bottom out right here at thirty thousand bucks it's probably it's it's not going to be bottom out of here it's not going to just fucking leave the train station and then you'll never be able to get in again or at least i would highly 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 doubt that i'd be very much willing to put my name on that um although maybe i do that at my own behest because that's usually a bad thing to do hubris is a hell of a drug my friends anyways um you know, I'd, I'd, I'd more or less be looking for like, if, if you see Bitcoin base out here for like three to four months, that's at the point where I really start to say, okay, this is, you know, this start to look interesting for perhaps another upside move. Uh, John Johnson says, Zer, what kind of music are you bullish on? Take care. I'm definitely bullish on Rage Against the Machine this morning, but, uh, you know, it depends what sort of a mood I'm in, man. I, I listen to all sorts of just weird shit. Um, <laughs> so you don't, you don't want to fucking listen to it. But you know what I was really enjoying, man, was Finland's, uh, Finland's um, uh, show at the Eurovision concert this past weekend. It was fucking epic man uh honestly like they 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 really put on a show they have such presence on the stage and uh and such swag man I, I you know i hate that word but they really do deserve it like that was that was fucking special man with all the fire and everything it was just a great 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 performance and uh you know those sorts of things i i have a lot of respect for i just think it's so fucking cool um and uh and it's you know it's, uh, you know e e even if i wasn't living in finland i'd still i'd, I'd still say that that was, that was pretty fucking epic right there that was super fucking epic right there anyways um his favorite is cocaine bob sager <laughs> says boss 89 no man actually I'm, I'm very much not a fan of cocaine i feel like cocaine just makes you into a fucking dickhead and more important for whatever reason for whatever reason cocaine everyone on fucking cocaine always wants to start a goddamn business with you <laughs> like thinks you're gonna rule the world it's uh it's a very interesting drug but uh i think coffee's coffee's strong enough already man coffee's strong enough already anyways um what else do i want to get to before we get into the fun stuff uh or into into some other things i want to call out something that um that that one of our community members here actually uh, brought to my attention mr renee j big shout out to you sir so this was uh the, or, or what he essentially described was um something that i alluded to yesterday but i didn't expand on and actually i actually hadn't really back tested myself but Look, uh, looking at this, what's up, chiropractor? Finland was the best man. By the way, heard BitBoy uh, <laughs> loves you and, wa and watches the cave. Yeah, man, I mean, that, that's awesome. You know, uh, you know, mu you know, much love to Mr. Ben over there. Uh, he's got, I mean, man, he's got like the biggest fucking channel in this whole goddamn space. Crazy. Absolutely fucking crazy. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> you know, hopefully th these sort of times are going well for him as well. Um, but uh, but yes, what what was I just about to say? Oh, motherfucker, I lost my trains of thoughts here. Yes, that's it. Ha. All right. Uh, referencing Mr. Rene J. So uh, I, I alluded to this yesterday. I did not expect upon it and i haven't done the back test on it so why should do it right now um he said or, or or what i said yesterday was bitcoin got its first open and close below the 200 simple i believe this was on saturday this is kind of a big deal because you know when you break a moving average it doesn't mean too much on its own when you open and close below it that's like you know confidence within the market and we have confidence within the market uh, right here especially with the 200 x benchmark average actually getting a little bit of a negative slope there if the 200 simple gets a negative slope as well then well <laughs> if you like bitcoin at forty thousand bucks you're gonna love it at 15 or twenty thousand bucks uh but again long ways to go before that hey what's up abba dynamic after the bitcoin ta yeah man uh could you share any pro tips on improving yeah absolutely uh yeah we can definitely talk about that I actually really enjoy those topics, man, because it's stuff that I spent a lot of time thinking about because I struggled with it so much <laughs> when I first began. I still do sometimes too, so I can I can definitely sh I can definitely share a few tips uh, that I've employed in my life uh, that can uh, that that uh, that have certainly helped me and added value. Anyways, um, so yes, we got our first open closure below the 200 simple on Saturday, and any time that we've done that in the history of Bitcoin, and again, I've not I've been back tested this ju this just yet, but uh, but but I'm gonna go with Renee right now. And anytime that we've gotten that, uh, Bitcoin's dropped off. Well, let's see. We got our first one over here. We got our first one over here. Open and closure below. Base, base, base. And then from next top, <laughs> next top to next low, about 15.5%. Uh, nasty, but um, yeah, nasty. I mean, we kind of already have a move like that, I think. Uh, same thing over here on this one. This one obviously led into your next major dump on this region at about, oh dear Lord. Okay, that one's uh, about 30%, as you can see. 
Um, then where's the next one after that? Uh, that was coronavirus dump time. So you already know that that one's going to be extremely aggressive all the way down about 41% drop down after that. Uh, what about before that? Yes, we have to go all the way back to 2018. Um, again, an open close below here. Actually, this one would not be a good example. So that would be an outlier. Sorry, that would be thus far an outlier and an example of this actually failing. So I'm not certain how much I trust it just yet. Open and closure below here. Next rally up to next low. What do we see? About a 30% drop down. Okay. And then it stayed that way the whole way through. Yeah, the next year and a half, it looks like. Uh, any other times before that that we actually traded below there? Uh, again, on this example over here, really not a really not a good iteration of this. You know, at most about nine percent, nine percent down. Or actually, no, no, no. This one's probably a little bit more here. So let's give it its its full merit. Seventeen and a half percent down. Okay, so still still respectable, I suppose. Um, and then after that, uh, we have a couple more over here, which I'm just curious. What are we What are we looking at on this one? Fifteen and a half percent. So you know, it does look like um, you know, it, you know, it does it does it does have some merit. But have we already done a move like that? I think so, actually. Uh, let's see. Yeah, about 20% move off that. So, you know, we could reasonably say that perhaps that sort of a uh, signature has already played out. So, you know what, uh, now that I've kind of gone back in time and looked at it, uh, you know, I, I definitely appreciate you, Renee, bringing that up. Um, however, I would say it's relevant, yes. Uh, however, I, I, I think that you could just as easily make an argument that we've already played out that move. I mean, 20% is pretty fucking, pretty fucking big. <laughs> pretty fucking big, man. All right, um, bald haircut at 25,000 bucks. No way, man. I'm, sh I'm, I'm shining this fucking forehead as long as I can, my friend. I'm gonna get fake hair too. It's no problem one day you're gonna see me in like uh in like a full in the full face of hair i'm gonna have like straight hair too instead of this uh nasty curly nappy headed fuck hair and <laughs> and it's gonna be glorious my friend but when does that day come well hopefully a bitcoin rally soon that i can do it sooner uh no just kidding um well maybe not Hey, what's up? There he is, caretaker. Yeah, man, we already we already checked the hash ribbons earlier. It's not giving a signal right now, man. It's still it's still nowhere near, to be honest with you as well. Oh, there he is. What's up, Mr. DeCamps? Yeah, man, we'll get to uh we'll get to we'll get to Matic USD. Um uh, we'll get to Matic USD. I think um, I think we'll go back now to Mr. Abbott Dynamic. Or actually, before we go to Ad Abbott Dynamic, let's go over here and see what momentum also is suggesting on our on our tertiary charts. Mr. Caretaker's STC on the weekly still pretty nasty, <laughs> pretty fucking bad here. Um, <laughs> massive fucking range here too but uh, i don't think that the weekly is going to be too helpful on this maybe the daily is going to be better on this one and yeah we are starting to see daily momentum monsters pop back up here a little bit but keep in mind 47 or sorry 47 uh 40 30, oh my god i'm dyslexic 34750 is is that magical number if we do start closing below there it's pressure onto the downturn once again um probably know the test towards 31,000 32,000 bucks at the very least i mean at that point is yeah it doesn't look good it doesn't look good man um Let's see, what about the 12 hour right here? Elsa's having a laugh party in the background. Uh, 12 hour, downside momentum as well, as long as we're below 36.5. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna polish off the rest of this coffee. Oh, I spilled on myself. I need a sippy cup. Um, <laughs> she thinks that's funny. You're gonna have to clean it up, so that sucks for you. Uh, 10 hour, same thing, four hour. Four is actually up right now, but very weak. Thirty-three thousand bucks going to be the uh, going to be the magical number there. Uh, three hour, thirty-three same. Uh, two hour, thirty-two seven twenty hourly. Way the fuck up there. Uh, so yeah, I you know I would probably be looking for another downside move on Bitcoin, and then probably try another low somewhere around thirty-two to thirty-three, and then we'll see how and then we'll see how you know if if and how it recovers from there. If we get another closure today, let's say let's call it above like thirty-five thousand bucks, I'd probably be looking at that as you know bounty bounce territory maybe for something uh, later this week. Play between you know what we said earlier about thirty-three and thirty-seven thousand bucks, maybe a few weeks above, maybe a few weeks below. But overall, I, I think it's going to be you know a little bit more boring uh, these next uh, maybe not this week, but probably you know starting next week, you know. June, I imagine, is going to be a more or less boring month. Um, and that would actually be good. Uh, it'd be very, very bad if Bitcoin actually does drop out this current low because that's when, well, that's when you got to start to move those targets down to 25,000 bucks and beyond. So <laughs> there you go. All right, sweet. Um, okay, so let's get to let's get to Abic Dynamic. He has a really good question over here, and, um, and and this is actually something that we can definitely cut out and upload to this channel as well. Oh no, my hourly's wrecked. My hourly's wrecked. Oh, we got we even got hourly hidden bearish evidence. Hold on, maybe I should check out this here too. Uh, buy hourly. Uh, no, it doesn't have it. Okay, so fair enough. Uh, what about momentum monster? Is TSI starting to actually, you know, catch, you know, catch a little bit of momentum here too? Yeah, some right there. What about Byerly? Same thing. What about hourly? Yeah, and, th and this also can be looked at as as uh, as bullish divergence. So you know, uh, again, I I think that we're relatively close here. I have I've pretty much uh, a lot of the same things to say, but just another sort of test maybe down around here. Okay, so 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 Abbott Dynamics says, hey sir, hope you're well. Uh, I'm doing all right, man. Got a decent night of sleep last night. Hope you do. Hope you had a great weekend as well, man. And uh, let's see. After the Bitcoin TA, could you share any pro tips on improving discipline in both trading and life goals? Okay, so trading trading is life. Like what you do in trading is basically how you live as well. 
like I actually learned a lot. I probably learned, uh, I probably learned a lot more about myself, like my actual self and, and, and who I am and like that. I'm actually not, you know, I, I used to think that I was like really, uh, uh, emotionally sound and like very, uh, and very stable. No, man. <laughs> Once I got into trading, not so much, not so much, man. Pretty fucking crazy. So, uh, Elsa can definitely attest to that. And, uh, I'd hope that she wouldn't cause it's going to be embarrassing as hell. Anyways, my point is, my point is, is that trading is essentially an allegory for life you know they are one and the same the way that you do one thing is the way that you all do all things and in trading what have i done in order to improve discipline okay so the 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 easiest thing the the biggest quick fix that i've done in trading specifically specifically trading um to to essentially uh impose discipline was creating a trade journal and a trade checklist now that essentially gave me a roadmap and a guide that i could always essentially follow that would play into my long-term uh sorry you know my actual plan because as i've you know as i told that story last week when i actually blew up my account you know years ago it was a matter of coming back and realizing that deviating from that plan is where I, you know, get wrecked essentially. And if I continue to deviate from it, then I will naturally get wrecked over time. You know, I won't go into the full spiel right now, but just the main points are is that trading is a game of statistics and probabilities. And if it's a game of statistics and probabilities where you can't necessarily be perfect, it's a game of essentially risk management and also, well, knowing, you know, knowing your targets, you know, know you know, knowing your entry, profit, profit taking and risk management in its essence. So if you can't define those three things and make a plan that's based upon that with some sort of a statistical edge that does give you you know at least some non-zero chance over time not you know not non-zero probability over time to uh, to make money you can actually reasonably make a plan now obviously you know the higher the hit rate is the better but you can still make it work even with you know even with a subpar hit rate uh, assuming that you know the 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 results for it are really really good you know it's, it's an interplay between all three uh anyways Okay, so the main thing would be creating that trading journal and also the trading checklist. The trading checklist was essentially my strategy written down where I would go in before every fucking trade, every goddamn trade, and I'd say, does this meet my current trade uh, criteria? If it doesn't, do not take trade. It sounds simple. It sounds very fucking simple. But here's the thing. Most people won't do this. Like, it, 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 it boggles my mind to no end, and it actually makes me, like, quite literally angry. I don't know why it makes me angry. It shouldn't. It's not my problem, or I guess it is. It's a problem with me psychologically, but it makes me fucking furious when someone comes to me and says crown i'm trying to learn trading and, and, and like especially if they're in the program or something and uh and, and and i need some help it's like okay can i see your trade journal do you have a do you have a plan and they're like i keep it in my head oh okay uh this person like you're fucked man you, look this game is this game is hard as hell and and i'll be the first person to tell you that most people will not be successful in it not because they're not capable of it just because they don't do the fucking bare minimum at the very goddamn least like understand if you have a chance to do something that can potentially, you know, potentially give you a living, potentially give you a living, especially for the, you know, for the very serious people out there, you got to do the bare goddamn minimum because other people are. And if you are, you know, if you know, if you are kind of competing with other people, which I actually don't think that trading is necessarily com competition, it's more or less competition with yourself. But in the in the essence of this, uh, this specific example, we'll kind of use that. Then, look, you better be doing the goddamn bare minimum in order to at the very least think that you have a got that even think that you have a chance in this game. Josh says, I need help uh, with good examples uh, of a good trading journal. Where can you point me to? OK, so a good trading journal is uh, I would actually point uh, Josh, you're in the TA program. Reference the video in the I think it's like the second section, the second or third section. It's titled Trade uh, Checklist. That's 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 probably that's that, that's probably going to be where where uh, where you want to go. The trade journal is more or less just documenting your results over time. But the trade checklist and actually it's basically just a plan it is getting your plan on paper so that every time you take a trade, you have to like literally look at it and then say does this mean my criteria if it doesn't i cannot take this trade and you have to force yourself to literally think about that every goddamn time because a lot of people can actually make a you know a decent trading plan it doesn't maybe not like the best trading plan of all time but a decent one even with like you know a few months of of, of concerted effort of training uh but the problem is that they typically don't follow it you know they start feeling the emotions as do we all i get it as well and then what what happens after that well you just <laughs> you start deviating from your plan and we you start deviating from your plan when you are playing a game that is statistically based you can no longer be reliant on those statistics. You can't expect that they're going to work in your favor. So you quite literally have no plan. You have no edge. And 
you might as you you might as well just throw your money down the drain because that is more or less what's going to happen um at least in my experience so uh you know again these are things these are lessons that i had to learn incredibly painfully like i actually went fucking broke learning that lesson like literally broke zero fucking dollars which uh i would strongly suggest that you do not want to do it's really not fun i can tell you that straight up look i i know that like uh people who are very enlightened out there will tell you that money isn't everything look money isn't everything but uh it's better to have no money problems than to have money problems or at least you want to have money problems like figuring out your taxes rather than figuring out how to buy food you know so so with that in mind uh, I, I you know I do think that that was a big one for me um, if I'm talking just in general in life uh, one of the things that's really helped me is keeping just a general journal of my days and then also meditation uh, for 15 to 20 minutes every morning and then when I do that after that I typically will uh, journal and and I'll do it a lot of the time on my phone it doesn't have to be trading related but I a lot of the time it will you know will have stuff like that in it just naturally because that is well I guess that's my life for better or worse, which is kind of sad, but um, it's fucking sad, man. but I, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it, man. I do enjoy it. So I'm, I'm a boomer. Well, fuck off, sir. Anyways. Um, Anyways, uh, I, I find I find a lot of value in that. And you could even think of that as like a religious thing. You know, I don't think of myself as like a religious person, but that is my religion. It's like being adherent to that in some way as Brother Christensen comes back into the mix. What's up, man? Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, and, and we'll get to that soon enough as well. Um, but overall, you know, this is this is really, 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 really powerful stuff, because if you can employ this stuff, you know, for even just a few years cons uh, consistently within your life, and I mean consistent, like every fucking day, uh, you really need to carve out that time. And, and can you can you can you carve out like 15 to 20 minutes? Yeah, you probably can. You know, do you spend 15 to 20 minutes like scrolling through Facebook or, or Instagram or, or on Netflix? If you do that or playing video games or whatever it might be. If, if you do that, then you got time. You definitely have time. So there's really no excuse, in my opinion. Um, no matter what, I will always make time for that. I always, 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 no matter what the situation is, uh, doesn't matter. It does not matter because there's actually, <laughs> well, I, I don't need to go into, in, into that example, but more importantly, I, I just want to focus on the stuff that actually fucking works here. So that's what I'd say. Just general stuff, very, very simple stuff. And then also, you know, having set goals for yourself as well. Goals need to be relatable and man and, and, and definable as well. Like you can't say my goal is to be rich and happy. It's like, okay, well, how do you define that? Can you quantify that? Well, you can't. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Don't shut up. But you need something that's like relatable that you can actually uh, measure over time because you want to know if you're progressing towards there. Because basically what you're doing is you're creating a plan and then you want to see if your plan works over time. That's the idea. That's essentially the idea with that. So uh, make sure, you know, if you know, if you if you are new in this game, that would be probably the biggest thing that I could that I could pass on to you. It'll save you a lot of fucking pain because, look, you don't need to go through the same things that I went through. You don't. You, you quite literally don't. But it is up to you. Only you. No one else here. No one else in your family. No one else in your fucking life it is only up to you in this game of being a trader to take responsibility for that and if you actually take 100 responsibility 100 of the time then it'll probably end up you know decently well if you don't then 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 you get the same painful lesson that i did and uh, and again you don't need to do that you actually don't need to do that the saying goes a, uh, a smart man learns from his mistake a wise man learns from the mistakes of others i'm not that i'm not that wise man and believe, and people were telling me this the same the same thing when i first started trading too you know i was around some of the best traders in the world and guess what almost all of them have a story of like blowing out at least once um and uh and and they told me and they warned me and what did i think as a fucking mid-20s just idiot yeah, I can do it. <laughs> it's like, no, I can't, you know? So, uh, so, so, so if it, that, that, that would be the biggest thing, man. Hopefully, hope, hope, you know, hopefully that is in some way valuable. Um, I'll also get onto this one as well. I know that there's a few other comments here too, but I do want to kind of flow on this topic for a second here. Uh, brother Christensen says, brother crown, I find myself staring at the chart from open to close. I fear this game of mice and men has taken hostage my soul. How can I balance? Um, you know, having your own, again, having your own plan and knowing when you actually have uh, your edge on the table is at least my solution to that. Because a lot of the time you're not going to get hit on that edge. If you're like a long term investor, you can go maybe and sometimes uh, in some cases, even years, you know, even a year uh, waiting, you know, waiting for your edge to hit. I mean, I'm sure that the, you know, the smart investors in 2018 certainly did. Hey, do not play with the goddamn dishes right now. Uh, but, you know, this area over here. Uh, you know, that, that was a time to be waiting. How do you know? Because this was an actual fucking bear market. <laughs> How do you know that's an, ac an actual bear market? All major movement averages were in a bearish posturing for a long period of time. Again, this, these are technicalities here. I'm not going to tell you that, you know, 50 to 60% downside on, you know, on a lot of these crypto assets is not a bear market or, or not. It's just the implications wrong. It implies a wrong thing. Like people think, oh, it's not a bear market. So, uh, 
So I, I just buy right here. No, 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 like obviously not. But uh, if you want to go by the textbook definition, you know, that'd be it right here. Anyways, my point is, is that you got to You got to know exactly what you're looking for so that you're not essentially just having your eyes glued to the to the screen, because that's not going to make you a better trader. It's just going to make you crazy. Um, and I see a lot of people getting sucked into that, you know, skipping sleep and whatnot, which I actually did last week um, just because, well, my edge was getting hit off a lot. And for myself, the this really is like where I want to be trading. Th this is perfect right here for for the last six months i've mostly just been holding it and it's been boring as all hell and uh and, and so this is like actually kind of kind of fun for myself but you know to each their own right know what kind of trader you want to be know what your proclivities are and how do you discover that you backwards engineer what kind of person are you do you know what kind of person you are well spend some time with yourself and figure it out maybe you don't want to be on the short-term time frames maybe you don't want to be watching the fucking one minute i don't want i don't want to watch the one minute um even though you can make you can certainly make a living doing that i mean fucking a couple of the guys in the discord are doing that uh, Jesus Christ, Apriori in the Discord, like made f what, like four thousand bucks into two hundred fifty thousand bucks or some shit, <laughs> like just trading the tick charts on traditional market. I think it can be done a lot easier there, or in comparison to crypto markets. But hey, even some people doing crypto markets too. I mean, uh, Pe uh, uh, Peña show, uh, show, shows the one minute quite often too. It's not for me, but uh, but hey, to each their own. Know what kind of person you are. Know what kind of uh, know what kind of you know um, a goal is maintainable to your life. So for myself, I value sleep. I value uh, I value less risky positions, and uh, and so you know I, I really don't like going on time frames lower than than a four hour. And in times like these, you know, I actually really want to be hanging out on the higher term time frames because this is you know this, this is a big move. This, this this is a major move, and you know you're just gonna get blown through on it. You know, on a very low term time frame in my experience, because uh, again, Bitcoin can zoom thousands of bucks here and not even break the goddamn range. Again, for for one hundred percent clearness, where is Bitcoin's last lower high? <laughs> 59,000 bucks. So even if you are a daily trend trader, you aren't, you aren't reversing that trend anytime, anytime soon. And it could very easily come that we just get another downside move anyway. So, <laughs> so there we go. All right, sweet. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see what else we got here, man. Uh, I'll scroll down the comments a little bit more here. Hopefully I don't lose them. Okay. DeCamps, DeCamps is back here. My fucking man. The Dominicans are here. Uh, thoughts on mean regression charts for confluence we use with troll and Jared's. Um, okay. Mean regression. So that technically speaking, if you are going by textbook definition, like the, you know, the latest of, uh, of, of knowledge is not that price is mean reverting, it returns are mean reverting. What does that mean? Well, that's a whole nother fucking topic, which I don't even want to get into right now. Let's look at the goddamn chart. My point is that, is it going to technically be like the best way of doing things? No, it won't be the best way of doing things, but it can, it can very well be an actual way of doing things anyways. I mean, it, it does, you know, it, it, you know, in all fairness, it actually does operate uh, decently. Wow. Holy shit. Matic. Hey, Matt, uh, Matic having a great, great bounce back here. This is kind of what you want to see. I would be looking for this one to trade back up to about 160 ish region. Uh, decent chart here. Decent chart, actually. Uh, all things considered within the context of this market. Now, if Bitcoin heads lower, do I, do I expect Matic to not head lower as well? Of course I do. <laughs> of course. Bitcoin sets the tone. But if Bitcoin can just hold fucking sideways, I'd be giving this one at least a chance to pop back up somewhere around... Uh, yeah, what was it like 160, maybe even 170, but it is risk on. This is a toppy weekly chart, to be fair. If it takes out last week's low at 74 spots, uh, 329 cents, I'd be extremely fucking bearish on this thing, looking for, uh, you know, a very quick move down to about 59 cents and probably continuation after that. But you're asking about a four hour. All right, uh, we can look at a four hour. Uh, four hour, I'd be looking for it to kind of just play in a range between about 150 uh, short term and about uh, 120 to the downside short term. Uh, we do see some good signs of, you know, a little bit of bouncy behavior here. Again, uh, four hour TSI turning up, but it's, it's, it's heavily in the bearish buy zone there. It's already played a nice bounce thus far. I think that next next short term move is down, maybe down, maybe even all the way down to like one dollar even. And I give it a chance to bounce here. You know, I, I like to respect the charts that have been acting well in this one. While it's not necessarily like, you know, immune from Bitcoin's movements, uh, it, it has been relatively well in the context of this market. Um, uh, so fair enough. Hopefully that was helpful and hopefully that that was uh, what you're looking for. Um, OK, shit. Let me scroll back up on here. Um, let's see. All right. There we go. OK, got got Mr. Kendrick. Uh, let's see. Josh says 25K. Three day looks nasty. I think I think 25,000 bucks is still a reasonable target, but I'd still give Bitcoin a chance here. Um, you know, I, I do think that Bitcoin will test short term downside, maybe 32 or 33. Uh, and then the next failed and then the next failed bounce, I'd, I'd target 25,000 bucks. Yes, I'd agree. I mean, that's going to be right in line with the 200 right here. And uh, this chart is, I mean, dear Lord, man, we got we got pretty much a perfect uh, jewel sell signal right here. Extra confirmation on your halt or your short signal on the 16th of April. And that was the real one, actually. That was the day after the actual high. Um, 
Now, to be fair, it would have been very difficult to trade. I mean, Bitcoin did pop back up almost around that prior high again. But uh, after that, you got the hot of your short signal and then boom, down all the fucking way. I want to see this get up to a, uh, you know, at least into the 90 percentile as well. We don't really see too many pivots on this market without hitting around 90 plus percentile. Uh, for reference, um, 2018 dive in December was, uh, looks like, what was that, about 96, 97 percentile. Uh, coronavirus dump time, obviously a big one as well more recently on this high right here and then again on this high uh, in this area right here um and then several times in 2018 on all these failed uh, on these failed rally attempts um so you know i, I do want to see it get a little bit higher because right now it's it's getting there it's definitely getting there sir can you not can you not <laughs> please all right two seconds all right fair enough anyways uh looking at this right here we are already at a what we're at a <laughs> she called me a simp did you call me a simp i'm <laughs> I'll have you know, I was hanging out with the thickest hot tub streamer last night. Okay, so fuck off. Uh, 83 spot, uh, spot 33 percentile right there. It's getting up there, yes. And we do have a closure coming later tonight, so this will naturally go up as well. I'd imagine, barring any sort of like, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fucking go up. Uh, but, you know, that could still, it could still offer up uh, some more continuation. I mean, it's not going to go up all the way to like 95 percentile and one in one tick from 83. Uh, it, might, it might get up to like, you know, upper 80s, low, uh, maybe even 90, but very likely upper 80s. Um, uh, at that point, you know, I, I, I do think, I do think possible. Okay, sweet. Um, let's see, let's see, let's, let's, let's move it on down here. Let's see what else we got. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I called you a fuckface, but simp works too. Well, I am a, I am a simp. I am a simp. I simp I, I'm simping for Bitcoin right now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kendrick Camps is Trading in the Zone Encourage uh, Trading Journal too. Yeah, and that would be a great book to read. Um, trading in the Zone was a very, 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 very influential book for myself. Um, I thought that uh, you know I, I I thought that it was it didn't just it didn't just bring up like very interesting ideas but it also brought up actionable ideas. Basically, what trading in the zone uh, by Mark Douglas kind of wants you to do is it wants you to create a plan, test that plan for at least twenty iterations, and then if it you know if that's working for you, if you can do that on demo count, then hey yeah go ahead you know you know get get your feet wet within the market. But um, I do like that rule you know at least twenty iterations on a trade plan and then see how that works out before putting any real risk uh, on on those sorts of things. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Impact says, hey, Crown, uh, please discuss if the bearish divergence on the three month is confirmed. Thank you, sir. Um, is it confirmed? Co problem is you're not going to confirm anything without a closure, technically speaking. Uh, so is this confirmation? No, it's not actually. In fact, we haven't even taken out the last uh, three month low. So if this was going to confirm as a, uh, you know, as a local high, which it would have bearish divergence if it does, but it, it doesn't, it, ha it hasn't just yet. We'd either need to close this three month dildo below last month's low. That would be an extremely aggressive way of doing it. And then target would be yeah about twenty thousand bucks first target, um, uh, or we close at something like this, and then about three months later we come back down and actually take out both uh, 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 take out the low of this one. That would be a pretty damn aggressive way of doing it as well, and that would work. Uh, I do think it's relevant to look at the monthly here, just because the monthly is actually you know very close to closing in the next week, uh, quite literally seven days away from it, and we have con or I, I wouldn't say that we've com confirmed just yet, but you know, bearish divergence is in place. And uh, while we're bouncing off the 10 simple, which is going to be your, you know, your very easy target, the 21 is typically my major target on these. And uh, with, with, uh, with TSI also kind of threatening a downside twist there as well. I'm not, <laughs> it would look pretty nasty. And guess where that is about 25,000 bucks. So uh, 25,000 bucks is a very reasonable target to be fair, but I do think it's going to take a little bit of time. Ev uh, e you know, even if Bitcoin does break that way, it's probably, probably gonna take a little bit of time there. Uh, there he is. Captain's back in the house. Elsa's, I see Elsa there too. <laughs> nice one. Uh, can you talk, can, can we talk more about Bitcoin, please? Sir, you can just, you can just rewind the video. There's uh, there's, there's a shit ton of people here and they probably don't want uh, me to repeat all the things that I said for about 30, 40 minutes there just for you. Um, so, uh, you know, a little bit of a uh, little bit of awareness of the community would be great. You know, <laughs> uh, Abidemics says, thank you very much for the advice. Uh, ben, trying to pick up working out again and have the discipline of a three year old. I agree. I've learned more about myself from trading than therapy. Yeah. Uh, wor working out is actually a good allegory for for things as well. I mean, again, the way that you do one thing is the way that you do all things to quote uh, Miyoti, Migusashi, the fucking samurai guy, the, uh, the, the guy with the book of the five rings, really badass uh, samurai from way back when. He, he, he got into like, I don't know, hundreds of duels and he won all of them. It's kind of crazy. I think he even took on like multiple opponents at some times too. Uh, badass as hell. Anyways, uh, working out is, is very similar to that. You know, I, I like to make that sort of relationship as well because I know a lot of people have uh, experience working out and working out is very similar to trading in the sense that like, look, you make your plan, 
you go to the gym and you let the results come when they come. But if you can just make sure that your plan and actually taking the action of going to the gym are in place, you can trust that the results will come. And that's the way that I look at, you know, essentially uh, long term profits. If you have like a 60 percent or 69 percent uh, win rate on your strategy, you can very likely derive given your uh, you know, given your uh, position size and and, uh, and, you know, in your general profit uh, taking regions, you can kind of generally uh, uh, kind of uh, derive about what you're going to be looking at. But you can't necessarily be real. You can't like necessarily just come out with that at the outset. So you got to have your plan in first. Then you have to be, uh, you know, maintainable to that plan. The gym is very similar in that case. You know, you're not going to get what you want, which you're not going to get where you want to get with just one day of gym. Right. You're also not going to get, you know, where you want to get if you don't follow the fuck, if you don't actually go to the gym or you don't you don't have a plan to begin with. You know, so all all the facets need to be there. And it's very similar to actually even learning it as well. Uh, but that's, uh, I won't even go to that one right now. It's a little bit too much. All right, sweet. Should we buy Hex this Poly Farms? Um, actually, I'm curious what Hex chart is doing because uh, we did bring it up the other day. Maybe I was a top signal on this one because I said it was the best chart in cryptocurrency land. It still actually is the best chart in cryptocurrency land, funny, uh, or it may, may, maybe it's not anymore. Uh, it's, it's still actually decent here. It, it's still actually decent here. Uh, I actually don't have too many bad things to say about this. Uh, probably does come back down to about three, you know, just around three cents, but. Uh, Fuck, we shouldn't even get to this right uh, one right now. But I, I mean, to be fair, you know, I, I'm not making any any statements about the underlying technology. Look, I, I understand that there's a lot of questionable things going on with this one. That's not my game. I don't I don't make comments on fundamentals because uh, I'm not the person to do that. That's not what I used to trade. I wouldn't even know how to trade that. To be honest with you, I don't know how anyone knows how to trade that. Um, but in this case, right here, as far as just charts go, I mean, you know, as as, as long as you don't take out last week's low, uh, I'd give it a chance still, just because it is closing on new weekly highs, and I. I I, you know, I have rules of, of, of not training against that. Um, let's see. Let's see. What else do we have? Uh, Lucas DeGrasse says, do you have an opinion when people say trading is just gambling? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is gambling. Of course. I mean, we're gambling. But, you know, what is the difference between a regular gambler and a professional gambler? A regular gambler, you know, has no edge. They're just going in, you know, shooting the shit with their friends, probably, and, uh, and risking money with no statistical basis on it. A professional gambler would, you know, would take offense to you saying that, hey, man, you just got lucky playing poker and, and making it making it big. It's like, obviously not, man. If you can do it well over time, that's proof enough. That's proof enough so uh also I, I would say this as well like look man people <clears throat> Here's also another big thing. Um, so that would directly be addressing that conversation. The best thing really to handle on a conversation like that in the way that I do it is like, I just don't care what someone else thinks because it doesn't matter like if someone else thinks that trading is gambling or like TA is bullshit, which in a lot of cases it is bullshit. I mean, it, it just needs to be, but it doesn't need, it just, it's just less bullshit enough in order to fucking work. Um, you know, I, I, I don't care what they say because my results are proof enough for myself. I value my own opinion over that, over the opinion of someone who's probably just trying to make conversation. They probably don't know what they're talking about they probably don't have any experience with it they probably don't know anyone who's doing it so of course they're going to have a very uninformed opinion about it and uh, you know what for you know for the most part most people are just they just don't have anything better to say they don't know what to say so they so they repeat something that they heard you know that they heard from like a movie or or, or a show or like on tv you know some bullshit like that because most people are just kind of running on like you know unthinking mode so you can't really take something like that personally it's like look man if even if it is gambling does that does that change your results if it does then well obviously it is if it doesn't then who cares you know that's that that would be my response to that um the better the better the better response is just not is just to realize that you know your results supersede anyone's opinion especially if they are you know very uninformed right uh Abidemic says i didn't think about keeping a uh, general journal outside of trading that's a good idea yeah man you know it also kind of just helps you uh realize like what goes on in your life, <laughs> you know, because like the older that I get, the faster time goes, uh, the faster like like time feels that it goes, because I guess it does, you know, it's it's like like one day in the life of a one year old is like a huge deal, whereas one day in the life of a fucking 35 year old is not as much, <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, you know, kind of helps you realize, uh, you know, what you've done and, and where you've been. In. And um, and it's really fun to actually read back in those entries, too. Really, 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 really interesting. And I learned a lot about myself during that t during those times, too. Um, and especially like writing things out, you know, that I'm experiencing the day, it, uh, it helps. It helps kind of like digest them. Um, uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, let's see. Let's see. One minute chart is life. There you go. Uh, where's Pablo South? Hold on. I just saw you, Mr. S Mr. Pablo. Uh, one second, sir. One second. I think I got you right there. Um, let's see. Okay. Yep. We got that right there. All right. Uh, Pablo South says, glad Brother Christensen hasn't abandoned us during these turbulent times. His fight against the dark side with Nucor is real. Please look at hourly and daily. All right. Uh, symbol Nucor, N-U-E, I believe. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. 
<laughs> um, I still like this one long term. I I'm never going to hate a big breakout like this. This is this, this this is a breakout on confidence. I do like this a lot. This is a multi year long, a mul uh, even more than a decade long consolidation breaking out. And you really need to be using a higher term time from like a monthly. So that does imply that this thing can come down significantly. I mean, it could come down to like 92 and a half and still be long term bullish. Uh, looking at the weekly right here. I mean, you know, a doji dildo is a little bit of a toppy signal, but let's see how this week opens up. If we take out last week's low, then yes, I would be looking for a pullback to low 90s. But overall, I I am not in any way, shape, or form bearish on this thing, especially as long as above about uh, the breakout point, about 84 bucks. Daily is daily's fine. I, I don't have a major issue with it. Could easily come back down to 95 and a quarter, but ultimately long term, I like the volume on this breakout. I like the follow through, and I like the higher term time frames. That's what I'd be basing off of. Even hidden bullish divergence, actually, technically on this one too. So. I'd give it a chance to kind of trade a bit sideways, reaccumulate, and uh, and give another try, maybe until like Ju uh, June or uh, whatever the month is after June. Is 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 it June? Um, is it June? Next next month is June. Hey, next month's June. Hey, not bad. Um, holy shit, man, this year really is flying by. Hey, what's up, Legend Ali? <laughs> what's up, man? As a mid thirty idiot, uh, wrong to think F having a breakout. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> As a mid thirties idiot, uh, wrong to think fuck having a breakout. Uh, a breakout. Um, I don't know. I don't. Zs, what are you saying, man? <laughs> I don't understand your version of English this morning. Usually, I have a very easy time communicating with you, Mr. Zs, but uh, I don't. I don't know. What, I don't know what that means. Um, is it wrong to think F having a br oh Ford like like Ford uh, symbol F? Okay, I, I thought I thought you meant like fuck or something. Uh, Ford over here. Uh, do I think that it's having a breakout? No, I think it's having a breakdown. <laughs> I think I I I I think this move's already played out right here. I play this one to the downside on this rejection. Well, it's not that bad. Uh, I I no, I don't think it's having a breakout right here. Uh, I'd I'd play the range. I'd play the range. I'd say the range is about three bucks to the upside. Oh my god, this one was trading at like twelve bucks just a year or two ago, and two bucks two uh, two fifteen to the downside. Um, I'd play the range right now. I think that it comes back down at a range after that rejection, but uh, above here, about three bucks, I'd be looking for a nice move towards uh, about three seven, uh, 360 to 375 region. Um, I'd give this one a chance. Uh, it's It's been beat up a lot too, but uh, long term, I mean, long term is a macro downtrend, so make no mistake about it. Uh, pretty nasty here. Hey, what the fuck? No, this can't be the right thing because... Did, did they have like a stock split or something? Because I remember, I, I, I seriously remember like even just a couple years ago, they were trading at like 10 bucks or so. Yeah, they must have had a split or something because this, this, this would not be accurate. Um, no, it's not having a breakout just yet. Breakout on the macro would be about 325 on like a monthly and we haven't done that just yet. It, it is looking like it could turn around though overall, but give it some time. Uh, I don't think it's time to be aggressive on this one just yet. I, I wouldn't be, uh, I, I wouldn't be um, uh, saying that just yet. Uh, Abbott says, I knew you did hot tub streams on TikTok. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, Chiropractor says, would, would be awesome with a recap on cards daily, uh, cards USD on CoinGecko. Um, okay, I can bring that up on CoinDerpa over here. Uh, let's see how this rolls. Okay, um, let me just bring it into, hey, stop that. There we go. Um, okay, so you're looking at cards. Okay, versus... Okay, so this one right here, right? I remember we looked at this one last week. I'm curious to see how this one's followed through. I remember it versus dollar wasn't too great, but uh, Ethereum was okay. I guess it just didn't get beat up as much <laughs> against Ethereum. Uh, so fair enough. Um, let's see how much history we have. Uh, okay, a decent amount. We have a year here. Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd, I'd give it a chance to, at the very least, try for a low on the yearly chart, somewhere down around about uh, 40, 46 and a half, 47 bucks. We're, you know, we're very close to that right now. Uh, it's gonna again. It's very likely to trade with Bitcoin. You know, I don't think that there's too much merit and too much to be gained from looking at like a specific altcoin chart in general in this market. I think that you look at Bitcoin for direction, and then you and then you measure things up in relative strength. So this one would kind of be par for the course. I don't think it's relatively strong, nor well, nor nor relatively weak. Uh, but if Bitcoin, you know, if Bitcoin falters uh, further, you know, you're, you're going to be looking at a target towards 40, 43 bucks and probably beyond after a failed bounce. Um, but uh, you know, if Bitcoin tries to rally from the low 30s once again, I'd be looking at this one to pop back up towards uh 60 ish or so uh but uh looking at it right here yeah you know you give it the benefit of the doubt i guess maybe we could go down to like a very low term here but th look here's the problem with this thing man i can't really use my regular tools for this one i'm going strictly off of structure here and actually the the 90 day looks looks abysmal oh my god the 90 the 90 day looks just abysmal here i i, I can't give you a good opinion on this one man I, I i gotta shoot you straight um you know i i just can't give you a good opinion without without my tools on this one uh I'd be looking for Bitcoin on direction. That's what I that's what I could stand by here. I do think Bitcoin has another downside move uh, somewhere around the current lows and then tries for a bounce. And if that that happens, you know, I'll be looking for this one to pop back up, maybe like 
deeper 50s low 60s something like that um but i just don't feel confident in this and i don't i don't want to i i don't want to uh i don't want to put my name on something that i just don't feel yeah i, I don't feel too compelled by this one honestly mom apologies i know that that's annoying but um uh, I can't. I can't just give Moon or Doom on some that just looks straight, literally like this. It's not not giving me enough. Uh, Burnt Krem says, "Great call on Link dropping at 15.5 yesterday when that TA magic works. Every once in a while, every once in a while it works, but <laughs> but we keep that a secret, my friend. We keep that a secret. We can go check it out really quick here. Here's how Link has held up. Uh, oh wow, nice uh, having a bounce of 21. Hey, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I think that was on the bearish divergence call. So bounce off the 21 on the uh, monthly. You know, again, we don't have a whole hell of a lot of history here to really make." Two too much more off that but this one can bounce up uh, pretty significantly here maybe even to like 25 26 bucks uh but this one is pressure down here we did take out this whole range of lows don't necessarily like that um do we have any divergences building up on the other side we don't just yet um weekly is actually having a jewel sell signal 10th of may so that happened that actually happened yeah right after right after the high was put in so on, on basically uh, right before last week started so fair enough that and that is how we want the jewel to be working yeah one two three drafts right there too pretty bad um i'd be looking for bases at around 15 and a half bucks uh, again if bitcoin does test the downside um okay abogenomics says uh, sir maybe if you mention the fin zero vision performance again they'll fast track you citizenship <laughs> lol seriously hope you get it yeah man unfortunately sauna marin has still not responded to my pleas so <laughs> so i'm shut out of luck for now uh but oh well i'm done i don't even want to fucking live here <laughs> Uh, no, man, I, I really do. So hopefully I get some good news this week because I'm really, 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 really hoping uh, to get all of my bank accounts uh, squared away here because it's it's really, really difficult if you're not an EU citizen or even a Finnish citizen, especially, you know, they are they, they have like they have a lot of bureaucracy around that. Uh, it's kind of kind of a kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> It's no, it's not hard for a Finnish citizen. It's hard for a non Finnish citizen, sir. Uh, Flavio Amorel says, uh, Hi, sir. What's up, ma'am? How you doing, Flavio? KSM, USDT, daily and weekly, broke market structure, uh, bearish divergence weekly, targets to 97 or lower possible. Big, big uh, FA is coming where half or more supply will get locked. Thank you. The problem with fundamental analysis like that is, well, you already know that that's going to happen, right? It's no secret. Like, I'm guessing that you're not an insider, and I don't say that with, you know, in a condescending sense, just. Probably not. Um, that's public information, so you can very much reasonably expect that other people know this as well. Anyways, uh, has a broken market structure on the weekly? Yeah, it has. Did close on lower lows right there. Not not good. Not good. Now, I do think that this one can bounce up uh, easily to like 315-ish region. Uh, but as long as, uh, you know, as, uh, especially as long as below the 10 simple or, or even the 21 in this case, it's uh, it's it's very fucking risky to the downside here. Um, I'd be looking at next, next sort of relevant region to the downside somewhere around here, 180. So I wouldn't say... Uh, you said uh, 97 bucks first. Um, no, 97 uh, would actually not even be the same. The next target after that, it'd be right here at about 130. So level by level in the case is, is the way that I do in these sorts of um, in these sorts of uh, what's called uh, situations. So uh, I wouldn't say that just yet. And this one, this one does look pretty damn weak on the lows right now. I think that this one probably sets up for another test of like 225 and probably tries to bounce there again. And then hold your breath and put your fucking hands together for blue law Jesus, because because <laughs> uh, that one, well. It's, it's it's looking more bouncy around here to be fair so I'd, I'd give it a chance first give it a chance first rochelle says trading trading is a good mental workout it is i mean it is work it is mental workout every and you can and and, and here's a good here, here's a good analogy uh rochelle you, you just brought my mind to it trading can be thought of very similar to like weightlifting and trying to get uh bigger muscles or stronger in the gym you know every time every time that you follow your trading plan assuming that your trading plan you know actually is statistically based and, and does have some merit to it uh, over time which you probably already naturally back tested that's how you figure that that shit out duh um uh, every time that you follow that trading plan, you're doing one repetition in the gym and you get just a little bit stronger in that. Because every time that you repeat something, it actually ingrains the neurons in your brain, the, the neuron pathways in your brain deeper and deeper and deeper so that it becomes a more and more natural uh, habit, essentially. Um, that is why it's really difficult to break habits uh, uh, as, as well. Now, I'm not a fucking biologist here, but I do read a lot of books on that. And, uh, and I'd strongly suggest uh, reading as well because it is pretty damn important to understand like how these things work. Because then it, you really start to understand like why you need to have consistent practices because uh, otherwise you will practice to be a fucking uh, bum because that's what happens when you don't follow your plan in my experience it's not good man it's not fucking good or actually girl Rochelle um, hey, there he is caretaker is, is Pedro here too is Nimbo I see Nimbo what's up Nimbo <laughs> uh, what's oh my god sir what are you doing over there <clears throat> <laughs> Stop taking the speed pills, dude. It's actually called coffee. Uh, it's it's freely available. You are happy to have it as well. And there's a deal on every goddamn. <laughs> Oh, there you go. All right. Uh, 
<laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, okay, so Abbott wants to look at. Uh, oh, nice. We got some. Uh, we got some. Uh, what's called uh, forex over here. Uh, CAD dollar versus U.S. dollar. So we got uh, bullshit dollar versus regular dollar. <laughs> Sorry, Canadians out there, but seriously, get your shit together. Uh, although, on second thought. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm long. Maybe I'm long a CAD dollar here. It's right at your macro breakout region. So you do see your range highs right here coming in from May 2015. It's right fucking there. You got the golden cross on the weekly. Momentum monsters are all showing a little bit more upside here. I would be looking for another range, however. Uh, I don't know if it's ready to break this just yet. It could still it could still take some time over time, but this is building up a case long term. And this actually would be in line with what we see on Dixie. I think it would be easier to watch Dixie in this uh, it, it, you know this particular situation. If you see Dixie take that next downside move, especially below last week's low, yeah, this one probably does take it out. And, you know, you can reasonably have targets, uh, you know, over the next few months, all the way up to like 89 cents. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Justin Trudeau bucks are going to be looking good at that point, I suppose. Uh, long term, I mean, this is this is an accumulation phase right here. So this would also be, a, you know, a decent thing for Bitcoin, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Brian calling me out on Ford. Yeah, man. Uh, I, th I thought it was. I thought it was. Symbol F usually means fuck uh, in my parlance, but uh, but in this case, yes, Ford. Uh, sorry, man. It, it's sometimes just easier to uh, to type it out. What's up, Spencer Smith? Uh, he says uh, Thunder Token BSC under a penny. Thunder Token BSC. What uh, is this a thing? Um, what the fuck is it? Oh dear lord, man. You are. Oh dear lord. You are really in the uh, in the shits over here, aren't you? Um, okay. It looks like this is not a thing uh, from my estimation. I don't see thunder token, or maybe you're just looking at BSC. Maybe you're just looking at this uh, BSC right here. Oh, we can't even we can't even bring up BSC. What the fuck? Uh, maybe versus BUSD. Uh, I can't bring up any of these actually. Um, could you confirm the ticker? Because uh, apparently, whatever you're trying to uh, say, uh, TradingView is not bringing it up. So I don't know if I can look at it, actually. Uh, I don't know. Is it one of these bullshits over here? <laughs> Go to uh, shit gecko or whatever the hell. Uh, Thunder. Let's see if this pops anything up. Thunder Core, Thunder Bolt, Thunder Swap. None of those are Thunder Token. I don't know where to go with this on this one, man. So uh, apologies, but unfortunately, it looks like um, I'm limited by what TradingView and and even Coin Gecko uh, have in order. So it's not a Coin Gecko, man. I mean, that's like it's bad enough that it's not on TradingView, but not on Coin Gecko as well. Ooh, man. <laughs> oh boy. All right, Fillmore. Hey, what's up, Fillmore? I'm a newbie and thinking on strategies. Okay, very small amounts on 100x. On okay, that's a terrible idea. Uh, terrible fucking idea. Um, never trade 100x. Uh, ever, ever, ever. There is absolutely zero reason to uh, trade a fucking demo account. You said you're a newbie by your own definition. If you're a newbie, don't put any fucking money at risk. Why are you doing that? Hey, do this. Trade, trade that, trade that, trade that very seriously stupid strategy. Sorry, um, but you're you know you're new. You can't really expect anything better. Uh, Sorry, this is sounding condescending. I'm not trying to be that way. I'm trying to hopefully help in some way. Trade that strategy on a demo account and you'll probably come to the same realization that I assume you will. Um, look, uh, on strong support resistance Fibonacci levels, okay, on what time frame? Uh, how are you basing it off? Do you even know if you're doing your fibs right? I don't know. I don't know. By the way, uh, actually, um, uh, Mr. Jack, uh, who, who, have, uh, who, who have had it on this channel a couple times now for interviews, uh, he actually made a free tool, I think, on TradingView um, that will actually plot your fibs for you if you're not if you're not familiar with them. Let's see. I think it's Guru. Oh, man, that, that doesn't bring it up. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't know how to spell it. I, I don't actually know how to spell it, but I'll have to, I'll have to pull that up uh, maybe on another stream and get the link and just uh, and give it out to everyone. But uh, it's, it's, it's actually pretty damn cool. Hey, what's up, Mekin? Opening bank account overseas as an American is hard anyways. Yeah, it's very, very difficult, man. Very fucking difficult. That FACTA law in FBAR, it's not fun, man. It's really not fun. Um, is this a viable scalping strategy on lower term timeframes or am I dumb? Look, I do like scalping uh, on lower term timeframes. What's a lower term timeframe for you? Uh, if you're going to try that on like a fucking five minute, um, probably not going to end too well. But again, try it on a demo account. Please do not put money towards a strategy like that, man. There's zero reason ever to use 100x leverage. Uh, some people out there will tell you that you know they they uh, that you know they can do it. Look, it's never going to be optimal. Is my point as well. If you get liquidated, you're you're going to pay an extra fee on just on top of like your uh, normal marketing market fees anyway. So it's already suboptimal. It's always going to be better to manage your own risk because your liquidation fee is also going to be somewhat uh, variable as well. And in this like heavily volatile and wiki market, you can get taken out of a decent position that probably would have worked in your favor. Um, 
uh but you know your liquidation is just ridiculous it's just ridiculously there there's there's not even a reason to even use fucking 10x leverage it's absurd that this market gives this to you and this is actually this is actually one of the fundamental reasons why we do see these incredibly aggressive moves here there there's zero reason to even have like above fucking 5x leverage in my opinion when i was a professional trader in in um in uh in, in traditional land we had access to 4x leverage. That's 4x. 4, just the number 4, like a 4. Look, this this one right here. A 4-hour, like 4, okay? <laughs> not 5x, not 10x, not a, certainly not 100x. It's ridiculous. Um, and, and if you went to, like, 4x leverage, like, you were thought of as, like, oh, my God, this guy's, like, this guy's kind of crazy right now. It's really not a good idea. Um, you know, if, if you can't if you can't make money with just straight, tra straight uh, spot trading, it's it's probably a bad sign. It's probably a pretty damn bad sign. That's what I'd say about that, man. Uh, I would even say if you are a newbie, again, by your own definition, by your own definition, you're you're calling yourself a newbie. Newbie, I would say this. I would say this. Do not do. <laughs> just don't fucking do that, man. Um, fuck. Where was I gonna go with that? I forgot. I, forgot. I looked at the wrong Ford. Okay. All right. Maybe I, oh, you're. Oh, oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. We'll look at Ford again then. My bad. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Looking good, actually. It, uh, yeah, I would say it, it, it isn't a, it isn't a breakout uh, posture here. I would be looking for a move back down to about 13 bucks this week. But uh, after that, I'd be looking for this one to continue onwards and upwards. Golden Cross on the weekly as it does approach a macro range. Nice reversal formation right here and a, an inverted head and, head and shoulders formation. Yeah, I, I do think so, Ali Z. Uh, uh, apologies, man. I got that one completely wrong because I typed in Ford rather than symbol F. Apologies on that one. My bad. Yes, this 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 is forward here. This is forward here. Uh, apologies on that one. <clears throat> uh, Robert Johnson says morning crown Ethereum on lower to mid time frames. Por favor. Okay. Yeah. It's uh. Let's see what let's see what the old buterol is doing here. Uh, 2150. Let's see. I imagine it's going to play with Bitcoin. So, you know, if, uh, if Butero wants to base out again, we actually did hit our 18, our low 1800 target right here. Uh, these, all these trend lines are just relevant for very low term time frames right now. If, in case you're wondering why, I would actually still stick by them. But, um, if you're just looking for like what's actually important here, I'd be, lo I'd be taking this one out actually. And I'll just move this one up for now. And uh, this guy right here, if we do see another downside move, I would not be looking at that as a basin area. I'd be looking at this area right here. Anywhere between about 19 and uh, in like mid 18 ish region. I think that's also the daily. Yeah, it's a daily 200 right there too. So I, I do think you could have, it could very easily have another swipe down around here, but ultimately it's going to be up to Bitcoin to decide direction. Personally speaking, I think we swipe the downside once again and then, and then prepare a bounce a bit. Uh, this one's been pretty damn beat up too. You know, I'm not saying that this one's going to go for full on reversal and, you know, and go back to the moon just immediately. No. Uh, but I, you know, I, 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 I would give it a chance alongside Bitcoin um, to the upside. Where's your next major region uh, that's relevant? Well, that'd just be your last lower high. And that'd be right here. That'd be right here at about 23. 25 region or actually you know in this case because things are rather volatile it actually moved up to the top side of the range um so this this one can play you know in a quite in a quite aggressive range here but above on a closure above about 2215 i would look forward to, to play back up to this range right here to the downside i'd be looking for this area right here this this to me right here where it's currently situated at that's a no trade zone i'm not interested in this right here um you know it could just as easily come back down as it can go up yes we do see several signs of bullish divergence right here which would give me a little bit more an air on the upside but uh i would i still wouldn't rule out a, a quick downside move first and then try for that move and then i'd be looking again tentatively 2200 about and then 2250 ish a little bit below 2250 ish region and then play it like that and again bitcoin's probably gonna just get it easier here um yeah we also have plenty of uh, plenty of major movement have to come within this region as well hey what's up double r inverted head and shoulders on bitcoin 50 oh you bastard oh you bastard love you too sir love you <laughs> love you forever my fucking man um okay let's see is there an inverted head and shoulders on the 15 minute i would not play 15 minute uh, formation to be honest with you could it be in there um Okay, here's the thing. Technically speaking, I would say no. Uh, however, the way that you'd play this in just in just a uh, in just a range perspective, anyways, is going to be the same. So, where's your neckline? Uh, whoops, let me get this one off right here. Where's where's your neckline going to be? It would tend to it would be about here, right? That's uh, uh, 35,750. And if we do break above there, you know, again, I don't think that you could apply a measure move on this one, but I do think that uh, I would be looking at a move towards about 37, maybe a little bit above 37 bucks. So, uh, sorry, 37,000 bucks, that is somewhere right around here is what I'd be looking towards on a move. Um, 
but technically speaking, no, the volume signature is not is not correct. The shape is also incorrect as well. If this was going to be an inverted head and shoulders, you would have seen it like right here. This would have been left shoulder, head, right shoulder, like right here, and then boom out. Instead, it's going through another formation right here, and it's actually un it's very unclear to me what it's actually doing. Um, I do think that there are that there's a lot of signs that it will break to the upside here. Uh, we do see 15 minute uh, TSI looking like wants to turn up, and 15 minute RSI giving several drives of uh, hidden bull right there too. Uh, potentially on an expansive volatility read there as well, but not just yet. I'd want to see this area actually broken. Boom. Then I'd target that move up. Um, until then, eh, I, I, I mean, I, I would also just not play 15 minute myself, but you know, it's your money, sir. <laughs> Hopefully that helps, man. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's see. <laughs> let's get high, says, says Rupert. That's right, man. Let's get fucking high on price action. Alex D says, sir, Cardano USD daily weekly. All right, let's check it out. Uh, ADA USD. Man, I'm sweating like a fucking whore in church right now. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, let's see. What is uh, what is Cardano doing on the 15 minute? It looks very similar. Actually, this one look this one put in a bit of a sending triangle at the uh, at the current 15 minute range. But um, you are asking about daily weekly. Yes. Time frames that uh, that are very meaningful here. Uh, OK, rangey behavior here. 145 or sorry, one, about 150 to the upside. We can just move this down about one. Yeah, about 148, 150 ish region to the upside uh, to the downside. We're to be looking at a base. I mean, obviously, this is going to be uh, one dollar is going to be a natural base. Would I put anything in between there? Anything in betwixt there? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would mark off this local low right here on a four hour. If Bitcoin does come back down and scrape the lows at 32, 35 region, I'd be looking for this one to come back down to about 115, 117 uh, ish region and try for another local low right there and then and then give it a chance to bounce. But, uh, you know, if I'm looking at the daily, it still it still holds the one dollar lows, which I actually have a lot of respect for this one. Again, relative acting relatively better than most things in this market. Uh, you know, yes, it did get beat up. Yes, it did have a massive downside. But again, we're making a, a we're, we're you know, we're making a relative relationship between both shit and piss. And this one, I'd say it's not it's not as shitty. It's more pissy. Um, in this case right here, daily RSI is more in a bouncing territory uh, weekly. Weekly looks like it wants to test back down to one, uh, yeah, uh, the downside again, somewhere around like one, what is this, 120 short term? No, one, 115, 117 is short term probably. Um, and then I give it a chance to bounce. So until, until then, I think it is a little bit nasty here. Uh, there are a few pretty bad signals, though, I would say. Weekly jewel sell signal on the 10th of May. That one has not fully played out just yet. Um, so until it reclaims the top side of the range, this is pretty damn risky here. And below one dollar, you're gonna get the you're gonna cue the oh fuck Lexington Steel uh, gifts uh, all the way down to forty three cents. <laughs> it's actually hilarious, man. Cardano for whatever reason is like extremely popular with um, a lot of people who. I, I see getting into cryptocurrency as of the last uh, half year, <laughs> you know, there, there's this one guy, this author that I read one time, Jeffrey Miller or something. He's been like singing the praises of this thing. I see like uh, people from uh, like, like experts from other uh, areas that are for whatever um, reason, like starting to become fucking experts in trading now too. He's one of them, which is hilarious. Uh, and I, <laughs> you can just check his Twitter for, for, for evidence of that. He's a good guy though. I actually really like his books, but um, I don't know about his, uh, don't know about his trading um the other guy would be uh, chris masterson who's a goddamn genius when it comes to nutrition like he is the guy he is one of the guys but he's <laughs> oh my god. every time i read one of his fucking ta posts i'm just like oh my god this is why people hate ta and you're literally using a td sequential on a five minute sir what the fuck you're even using a td sequential to begin with but <laughs> on a fucking five minute oh my lord man it's like where do you start where do you start when something's wrong when like it's all wrong it's like okay <laughs> the idea is wrong the explanation is wrong the interpretation of it is also wrong and the way that you're explaining this interpretation of that idea that is all that is already wrong is also wrong <laughs> it's like fuck um absolute genius when it comes to nutrition though but uh, but that's the thing is like look you know you can really only be you can really be an expert um you know at like a couple things in life i think um you know th there's only so much time that you have in a day even if you are being like rather efficient with it like it very difficult to be i I, th I think i think it'd be incredibly impressive to even be an expert in like more than three things in a lifetime what's up bobo south bonjour mon ami please look at square hourly and if, and if they're listening not, they're probably not listening but um I guess this channel is getting better so, or bigger, so may, maybe I should say something. If they are listening, man, I, I absolutely love your work, but uh, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. How about that? I absolutely love your work. Um, 
Uh, looking at Square, uh, looks like it wants to break down to me. <laughs> Nasty. Uh, does it try to bounce here first alongside regular markets? Yeah, and you know, uh, NASDAQ holding the range is probably going to help this one out for a little bit of time too. It is a financial now, isn't it? Um, so I suppose it hasn't broken out just yet. It is showing a lot of weakness though. Um, if the daily can reclaim the range, and, and in this case, what would reclaiming the range be? It would be right here, about 209, 209 to the upside, which I believe we did say a move was like to yes, uh, last week. Um, if it can actually close above here, I'd give another chance to bounce within this range and probably play with nasdaq but this is a toppy formation this is distribution going on right here so it's like to me it's like okay we either turn down from here or we probably put in like a slew of lower highs something like this um and then break down like i don't know in a couple months or something but i look for nasdaq on direction somewhere in the way that i look for bitcoin on direction for most altcoins um oh you just said hourly okay we'll look at the hourly then uh hourly down <laughs> okay that makes things a lot easier hourly lower highs and I'd be looking for it to come back down, maybe like uh, just below 200 bucks, or actually it's already at 200, so maybe like uh, 196 and a half, 197 region. Hourly TSI down, rejected at the buy zone. Hourly RSI is clearly short-term downside angled, hit and bearish divergence, plus just an overall deconstructive behavior right there. I'd be looking for some downside on that one. All right, sweet. M, okay, we got that, we got that. Uh, Mr, oh, Edward, Edward, where are you? <laughs> Where the fuck you go? Edward Butler. How you doing, man? Because I'm curious, uh, too, could, can you redo Ford? Yeah, we got Ford. We got Ford. Yeah, man. Apologies on that one. Uh, that that was definitely my bad. Apologies, Mr. Uh, Legend Ali Z. <laughs> my fuck it. I, I always get excited when I see him. He's, he's, a, he's a funny motherfucker. As is Punk Landia or Z's Landia as he goes by now, man. That guy, like, how is he so eclectic, culturally speaking? I don't get it. I don't get it, man. Can, can't even keep up. Can't even keep up. Yeah, four out death cross here too, man. Uh, but yeah, Ford actually did kind of like that chart. Actually did kind of like that chart. Uh, long term, that is. Ab Ab Abbott Dynamics says 100x is there for the casino exchanges, not traders. Yeah, 100x is never really to be used. Um, you know, there, there's honestly, man, I, I never even use leverage in that way anyways. Like I only lose, I only use cross leverage, but someone's going to hear that who's new and be like, oh shit, I'll use cross leverage too. Don't do that. Just don't use any leverage. Look, if you're new to this, don't, don't, don't even trade. Just, just trade a demo account. Just trade a demo account. Look, you don't need to right now. You don't need to risk real money at this point in your, in your career. If you're even, you know, if you're even within like your first year, you don't need to, you can, you can get a good amount of experience just from trading a demo account or a very low dollar amount. You can't, you can do it. What's up, Jose fam? I see you, brother. I see you, man. Let's see who else is, who else is around here. <clears throat> Oh my god. I see some uh, some shitcoin shellers here too. This is uh, this is good. Greg Smith, what's up, man? An OG of OGs. Moi, how you doing, brother? Uh okay, where do we leave off now? It, here it is. Frank Saints 27. What's up, man? Defo do a hair transplant. I did it and love it. Really? In India. Ah, India. I I think I won't be going there anytime soon, but <laughs> <laughs> due to the current situation, not because I don't like India. In fact, one of my good friends is Indian. I mean fucking Faraz, Faraz is Indian as all hell. I, <laughs> but but I don't know. I don't know if I'd get <laughs> the situation sounds pretty damn dire there. So hopefully, hopefully you're staying safe, man. Not expensive and excellent outcome. Uh, totally recommended, my man. Uh, much love. Oh, you're you're uh, you're you're Australian, but you went to India to do it. Interesting, huh? Okay, very cool, very cool. Actually, that that's uh, that's 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 a pretty instant information, man. Um, yeah, man, I might do it at some point. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Really? Maybe. I don't you know. don't need it. Elsa says I don't need it. <laughs> Sir, I just want to have hair, and I want, I want people to stop making the mean comments! I've had enough of these! Stop it, guys! <laughs> okay, someone just spamming G. <laughs> uh, okay, so I get a hair plant transplant, and you get some titty imp uh, implants. All right. All right. Um, okay, you're going to have some airbags in your fucking chest there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus. Uh, Abidenomic says copper one on the daily uh, bounce or continuation. Okay, remember we looked at this one last uh, week or so? I remember you saying that we hit some sort of a target, but let's, let's go check in on it. Um, are we looking for a daily bounce around here? Close, close. Yeah, I, I think around 725 ish region. Um, could it be continuation long term? Yeah, it looks pretty shitty long term. Uh, well, no, it doesn't look shitty long term. It doesn't look shitty long term. Now nah, I'm not gonna hate a uh, I'm not gonna hate a chart like this, but uh, I I I do think long term it will come down to about 700 bucks at some point. Short term, extremely short term downside, uh, like 725. Probably probably try, tries for a bounce there. You know, plays in a range between there and about 750 ish region, and then I'd be looking for uh, a downside move after that. Uh, weekly jewels bearish, obviously. Weekly TSI is bearish. Weekly uh, RSI is actually uh, actually good, but uh, I'd favor the other two over that in this in this current situation. 
Is there any bearish divergence here? No, very interesting, very, very interesting. Uh, but overall, yeah, I, I think it tries to bounce from around this region and then pressure on after, after that bounce. Uh, okay, okay, let's see, what else, what else we got here? Okay, we got that, we got that. Nate Dog, <laughs> Crown, Crown's hair is bullish. <laughs> Is a little bit bullish here right now. Pavel says, uh, hey, Crown, do you think institutions are buying market? Do I think that they're buying, like, putting in market orders to buy? They're probably doing OTC deals, if anything, because you can't really, uh, you probably don't want to buy on fucking market on this goddamn market, this this shit market. Uh, you, you, you need, like, actual, uh, you, you do that OTC if you're going to be an institution, most likely. Um... <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, Payoff Wonder says, uh, Hey Crown, uh, mad respect for your work. Thanks, man. Uh, can you check out Bitcoin 3-day RSI? There's an upsloping demand since November 2018. I don't really look at uh, RSI's indicative of demand. Is there an upsloping demand from 2018? Um, no, but what I can show you is actually some a little bit better. Well, actually, uh, kind of. Um, what I can show you is actually something a little bit better over here on uh, on daily CME. I, we actually would have, I wouldn't call this an upsloping demand. That's not that's not really what it implies. But uh, it does look like, you know, within the context of this macro structure here, this could be, if if that does bounce off that region, it could still be, you know, a major low. I mean, we're talking about lows over here. We're talking about lows over here. We're talking about lows over here. And all these have been extremes, you know, as you see on, on BBWP here too. So it could be, could be, but uh, it's going to test you. It's going to test you first. <laughs> so good luck with that, man. Hey, what's up? What's up, Alejandro? What's up, man? Crown. Crown, you big old boiled potato. <laughs> this is for the hair plugs fund. Thanks, man. Uh, I won't have to uh, crap myself sleep anymore. Uh, it'll be great. Uh, but yeah, overall, Bitcoin, I mean, I mean, just between the 200, uh, just between the, the 200E and the 200S right here is uh, kind of where I'm looking for this week. Uh, anywhere between that is, uh, is cool. Uh, I feel sorry for the new people here. Yeah, man, you know, this market is, uh, this market is brutal, man. It is, uh, it is completely fucking brutal. It takes no prisoners. There's no quarter given, no prisoners taken. And, um, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of baptized in blood in this market. So bear Jesus giveth, or bull Jesus giveth and bear Jesus taketh, taketh away. And all within the snap of a fucking Nicholas Martin's fingers right there, you know? Nicholas Martin's here with Data Dash, and today is May 24th of 2021. Looks like my nanos are still wrecked! Mom! Fucking tendy bitch! <laughs> She's not getting paid for a while, I don't think. <clears throat> Rochelle says, I don't use crossing crypto. How do you do it, Crown? Um, how do I do it? Well, I just manage my risk on top of it. So uh, when I'm using cross, which is uh, which I, all, I only use cross, I only use cross leverage and, perfor and portfolio margin when given the choice. Um, <clears throat> Uh, what I'm doing is I'm essentially managing my risk based off of pivots and whatnot, because um, you you have to. Because if you don't, you will lose your whole account on liquidation. You can't you can't just not do that. Uh, <clears throat> Emmy says you forgot me. What's what's your message, Emmy? Uh, can you can you repost it, sir? Hey, what's up, Rocky G? <laughs> Hair Jesus will scalp you. <laughs> Hair, Hair Jesus, what? <laughs> Nimbo says it's your rite of passage to get shish kebobbed by Bear Jesus. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's a pretty damn common story with most people that uh, everyone kind of goes through like at least one, you know, pretty major event, uh, respectively speaking. And it's, 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 it's as, as Z Rex says, initiation. Problem is, if you do not learn the lesson, if you do not learn the lesson, you are destined to repeat that lesson, sir. You're destined to repeat that lesson. Hey, what's up, Matt C from Singapore? Hey, hell yeah. I, I hear Singapore is like the future. It's like a futuristic city. It sounds pretty cool. It so sounds like somewhere I should definitely check out. Um, Crown needs a mullet bids in front party and back. I don't think I'm capable of growing one, actually. It's, uh, my hair is pretty nasty, uh, to be honest with you. It's very greasy. It's very curly. And um, honestly, I, I don't wish my hair on anyone else besides myself. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can, let's see if I can uh, pull up MS here. Yeah, and a lot of people in this channel, like a lot of people in this channel, like Z Rex, like Nimbo, have been here, you know, for the last cycle and whatnot, at, at least, and maybe even longer than that. Um, and so, you know, you guys know, and it's, you know, th this is also a really cool thing about the community. It's like, you know, we kind of go through a lot of these things together, too. Uh, Kendrick DeCamp says, while doing information recon for the Dominicans, I came across a recent pop interview where the guest spoke about market makers. Can MMB automated? Uh, it is, it's like 99.999% automated. <laughs> Actually, uh, you retracted your message, Emmy. How am I supposed to read it if you keep on retracting it? Um, <clears throat> so when I, when I was a market maker authorized trader uh, in traditional markets, I would be essentially running a program. It was called MJT. We also had a uh, symbol ACT 
Q-O-R, actor. It is supposed to like uh, symbolize actor, but spelled with a Q. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of them. Uh, Next Level and Live All uh, platform, pretty damn good too, but I don't know if you can market make on them. Um, but we did use that like as like a tertiary system in case the other ones went down. But overall, you know, it's it's essentially automated because things happen so goddamn fast. And, you know, when you're a market maker, you're mostly trading with a lot of other market makers or high frequency traders, actually. And it's and it's mostly a game like people have this fucking weird idea that like market makers are out to get you. Market makers are playing a Delta neutral game. They don't give a fuck about direction. And they are almost always. Uh, almost always hedged on some on some of their positions so they don't they don't care all they're trying to do is they're trying to play like some some arbitrage game which typically form come comes off of some variation of like uh the black schools formula so you know you're going to be playing the reversal conversion markets um more more or less that's what i was doing and i'd put in my inputs i'd be I'd, I'd, you know i'd make a theoretical value or I'd, I'd make a theoretical model of what i believed or you know what what my information told me was relevant for the put and call market based off of current price action uh, based off the black schools formula not exactly it was you know it's modified in a few ways there obviously because everyone needs to have their the, you know their small edge um and uh and then just trade it that way and i'd just be basically be sitting behind a computer waiting for trades to come in and you know my job was to essentially you know put in the inputs obviously and and then the and then the algorithm kind of does it itself and then i kind of watch and make sure that you know nothing too crazy happens and you know maybe there's some situations where i'm like ah, i don't really want to be buying puts here when we've already come down to the 200 simple on the you know on the daily here maybe i uh, maybe i gear my situ my uh, my system to be maybe selling a little bit of puts or maybe i want to gear it towards not not uh, not buying puts and maybe uh you know may and, and, and maybe being more on like the buy call side and uh and just be a little more aggressive with that so the you know the big thing with that is it's like you know, and you pe pe people make this like big deal out of like algo and bot trading. It, it's it's total fucking uh, hyperbole because everyone fucking does it. Ninety percent of trading in all markets is that, and it's not that like it's it's like the terminators are out to get you. No, they're actually really really dumb. These systems are like pretty fucking dumb. I mean, they're only doing what you give what 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 you do. What it basically allows you to do is it it, it allows you to like have. Uh, it, ha it allows you to have like an army of, of bots like who have a thousand hands and um and they can they can essentially do what you wanted to do very fucking fast but they are you know they're not really like thinking on their own obviously so um it's you, people get this wrong all the time i don't know where people get this fucking weird ass idea that the market makers are out to get you market makers are delta neutral for the most part um and if they're not then they're not a market maker they're they're probably a quant firm and they're probably trying to you know that that probably is the people who are actually trying to you know tr uh, tr trying to get you but it's not even you as a retail trader they're trying to get other quant firms because you as a retail trader you know co uh, combined do not even equate to a fraction of the size of what you know big money managers and other quant firms will have i mean they're playing with hundreds of millions billions of dollars in some cases and so you know people are like the fucking market makers want my thousand dollars of, of doggy coin i won't let them get it man i'm not selling it's like shut the fuck up you're ridiculous you have no idea how these things work you're just spreading the same nonsense that i see all around this goddamn place and if you ever hear someone saying that ever 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 i can assure you as someone who's been behind the scenes that is just complete bullshit and that person is either talking out of their ass uh deliberately or they're or or, or they just don't know any better um and it's not to say they're a bad person i mean it, you know people want someone to blame people want like the financial boogeyman to blame but going back to our earlier conversation about taking responsibility look man if you're not willing to take responsibility for those sorts of decisions and you just blame it on the fucking market maker or whatever you know whatever whatever your boogeyman is it's not going to make you a better trader it's going to actually prevent you from ever becoming a good trader because you will not be taking responsibility and even if even if it was even if it was the financial boogeyman who's 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 hiding under your trading desk you know ready to pull down your pants and stick in the red dildos in your bunghole once you take your position which is ridiculous to begin with um even if it was you still should take responsibility even if that is the case because guess what guess fucking what if you don't you're not going to change your behavior and you're still going to make the same silly decisions that are probably leading to to you to the to the situation that you probably are not very happy with um Hey, what's up, Alex? Hey, hey, Koran. <laughs> what's up, man? Uh, can you take a look at the godly Matic uh, one hour and four hour? Yeah, man. We looked at it earlier. It had a, it had a pretty nice uh, bounce back there. Uh, let's look at Matic uh, hourly and four hour. Four, four hour has a pretty obvious range going on right here. 
uh, 150 to the upside versus about a buck to the downside. We could move this up a little bit more. I think I think that's a hey, get up there, fucker. Um, hourly, short term, short term. It looks like it wants to test this again. 150. If it can start to uh, close above 150, I'd extend this run all the way up to about 175 region. Uh, it's 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 definitely it's definitely still acting as one of the better ones. But here, you know, I, I know you didn't ask for this time frame, but we'll go to the weekly. Look, if you take out last week's low, if you take out last week's low, I'd be looking for a move towards 60 cents and maybe beyond over time. Uh, it looked very bad. I mean, you, over time, it could even be 31 cents. It'd be pretty fucking bad. All right, so we got Cameron Yap, who is spamming. So we definitely, uh, <laughs> that's yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, that, that's a good way to get kicked out of here. Um, you know, again, if, if you're going to spam messages like that, like we have, to ba we have to ban you to keep this community like, you know, not shitty as fuck. Like one of my biggest fears is that this community will turn into uh, some of the other uh, communities that you see in this space that grow bigger, um, you know, much bigger than this channel, uh, admittedly. Uh, but, you know, it's just like you read through the comments, you're like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Um, you know, we're, we're trying to make this like as, you know, as, as, as relatable as possible. Uh, so massive thank you to our moddies right now, Mr. Caretaker, Mr. Nimbo. I think Pedro's probably around somewhere too, and Elsa's actually here as well, which massive thanks to everyone. Uh, let's see. Where can I learn more about market making? Did you know this before market making? No, I didn't. Uh, how did I become a market maker? I became a market maker because I essentially had a family friend who was a market maker and then was actually selling the platform that I eventually used to market make. So he, he, actually did, he actually did a really smart thing. He first taught me how to trade on his system and then he sold me a system, which I'm actually happy to do. Uh, and then I met some people through there that, that, uh, that, that kind of took me under their wing after that. Uh, so a lot of luck was involved to be fair a lot of luck was involved but um you know if, if you want to become a market maker now uh it's going to be pretty difficult um if you don't know anyone you could do it on your own but that's you know unless you know what you're fucking doing what you're not going to unless you have like a few years of experience or or, or have like a mentor of some sorts uh i it's it's not even not even worth it um it's not even fucking worth it uh, and, 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 and no clearinghouse is going to talk to you. No, no fucking clearinghouse or, or, uh, or, or firm is going to talk to you if you have like less than, you know, a quarter million bucks. Um, they're just going to shut, they're just going to shut the door in your face and say, uh, no, thank you. Uh, no, thank you at all. Nero Stratton says, bruh, will you check out Bcash USD on the four hour and daily? Sure. BCH US derp. Oh my God. We're already almost two hours into this bitch. My voice is cratering to the, to, to the floor right now already. Uh, again, a bit of a range here between the 55 and the 21. Um, you know, if Bitcoin comes back down and tests around 32, 30, uh, 33 region, I'd be looking for this one about 500 ish region, but you know, very likely a bounce there at the same time. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, could, could trade back up to about six, uh, 670, 675 after that. Uh, but this one's pressure on here. Structure is starting to melt down a bit here, as, uh, a bit here as well, but realistically, I wouldn't get, I actually wouldn't get like full on fucking, you know, catastrophe, a hundred dollar target or $200 target bearish until it actually takes out this low right here. For now, I'd give it a chance to bounce within this region. Yes. Momentum muscles are heavily bearish here. Yes. This one does have a natural downside bias. Um, but I'd give it a chance to balance and play with the rest of the market. Again, Bitcoin's going to, Bitcoin's going to, you know, essentially, um, uh, dictate the direction here and then you get to play, uh, and then you get to play alongside of that. But this one, tentatively speaking about 500 bucks to the downside versus uh, 700 or what was it? Uh, yeah, that's 700 bucks to the upside. Who I'd be looking for. Now you're asking about a four hour daily four hour is, I mean, we got that bullish divergence, same thing as Bitcoin four hour TSI turn up here too. You know, technically speaking, I would say I'd have a target of like 655 region, but, um, I, I do have a, I do have a haunch, not, uh, not, not based off of a whole hell of a lot, but I do have a haunch that this, that these do come back down and test around their lows before this is all said and done, regardless of whether you're bullish and bullish or bearish here. Uh, let's see what else I missed here, man. <clears throat> hey, my, my pleasure, Mr. Abbott. My pleasure, man. How long do you think this party is going to last? What party? The bear party or the bull party? <laughs> the red dildo party or the green dildo party? Because the green dildo party has uh, been over for a while. Uh, the red dildo party, I think it's going to at least last three to four months. Um, you know, could it be longer than that? Yes. Uh, I would say that this is going to be, you know, go into like a year plus territory if we start to take out, especially like, you know, 30,000 bucks to the downside, um, you know, on like a weekly closure. So uh, it's going to it's going to take some time here. Maybe, you know, maybe if you want to be more conservative, like 25,000 bucks is going to be your line in the sand. But, um, you know, at that point, you know, we'd actually have done something on Bitcoin that Bitcoin's never done, which is take out your last prior, uh, your last prior monthly or sorry, not, not monthly high, but your last prior, uh, cycle high. So in this case, our last prior cycle high on a closing base is going to be about 14, 14,000 bucks on a wake basis, about 20,000 bucks. Um, you know, did we do the same thing over here too? Actually, we did initially come back down below. Well, no, no, no. We never closed above it right there. So yeah, this was just straight continuation. Did we retest it right here? Came down to 1830. High over here was 1163. So yeah, not, uh, not quite actually. 
Not quite, in fact. Um, let's see. This range, rather similar. Yeah, rather, uh, rather similar right here to what Ethereum did, except uh, Ethereum a lot more aggressive there. A lot more fucking aggressive. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, I think I'm going to have to shut this off soon enough. As uh, so we're already about two, I, I didn't even realize this was two hours long, but uh, my voice is absolutely fucking killing me. Do do market makers play with their own money only? No, absolutely not. I mean, there's like firms of them where you can you, you know you can get staked by your by your firm. Uh, you know, maybe you're a part of a bank, maybe you're part of a firm that has you know their own uh, you know their own account, and they just kind of dole it out. The firm that I was a part of was Cutler Group, and we uh, I don't know they had probably like a hundred million on, on the books or something. Um, and uh and you know you you could play off that um but uh, you also have to kind of play the system too and, and every firm has like different rules as well but uh yeah you only have to you have to play your own bankroll um if you want to do that and but you'll still have to join a firm firm to do that because it's just there you know there's too much there's too much um there's too much tuna no there's too much just regulatory stuff after 2008 and you can't really do things on your own anymore uh because you know the people making these rules they, they've never been traders they don't know what, really what they're doing and so they make these rules that kind of make business very difficult and then you know you can get you can just get caught up in all of the legality shit of it and spend all your time doing that instead of actually fucking trading uh, thanks for that, Mr. Uh, Next to Ken. Uh, I guess no message on top of that, but or maybe there is. Can you do a quick look up on Nexo? Sure. All right, these are going to be the last two, Mr. Nex uh, Nexo and, uh, and Nero. All right, Lex uh, <laughs> Nexo. Here we go. Remember this one was like a 2017, 2018 shitcoin, right? Uh, we'll look at it versus dollar. Oh wow, it doesn't, it's not even on Bitrex anymore. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh filthy. Yeah, this this one looks like it's primed for some downside overall. Long term, I do think that this one has more downside. Short term, does it play between the 21 and the 55 here? Probably yes. Uh, daily look shitty as fuck wow wow this one actually does look like it wants to kind of uh, head to the downside first um i'd be looking for a greater base somewhere down around here somewhere down around about uh, 76 cents bounce along the way very likely at about one dollar even um that's you know but this is on a weekly so if you're on a lower term time frames which you did not did not specify time frame here so i don't know where you want me to go with this one but short term time frames i mean even this looks pretty fucking weak so again i, I think it's easy to look for bitcoin in a direction you know if this one wants to bounce it could very easily bounce up to like could very easily bounce up to like 190 <laughs> you know maybe, maybe even two bucks but uh look for bitcoin on direction here i think i think i think it's just easier to look uh, look at than this one all right, last one. Uh, Nero says, uh, do you take any new tropics? Uh, coffee. Coffee would be one. <laughs> anyway, anyways, fellas, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, my voice is wrecked right now. I need to go to the gym. I need to eat a shit ton of meat. And uh, then we'll be back on tomorrow. So hopefully everyone has a good day. Hopefully everyone's using this as, you know, at least an opportunity in some sorts. And uh, with that said, I want to salute you. And until next time, take care.